just without sound and music. Go figure. So, last time yeah, around... Quiet. Very quiet indeed. Um, last time around, you all, after some a uh, little bit of trials and tribulations, you managed to descend all the way down into your manor, to the far, far, far underground as you could, and you discovered a race of ancient people uh, thought extinct until recently uh, living there in underground ruins. You contacted them and they sent out, uh, you made an agreement and they sent out three interpret explorers with you to contact the other um, settlements of this ancient race that is still live underground in other places that they have told you about, such as beneath the redwoods, uh, inside of a uh, Can you hear me? dungeon thing. Hi, Brian. Hello, Brian. Welcome. And then also another <clears throat> another underground uh, settlement beneath the peak forest, and another one beneath the rich forest. Okay. Uh, deciding that probably the Red Woods was not only closer, but you have been there very recently, you decided to go there as your first stop, and so you did. So, being squad, after reaching the Red Woods uh, cavern, you descended into it, went all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, and uh, once there, you reached a sort of a hallway. Many rooms, chambers in sequence, uh, with trapped doors, trapped pillars, and then, and then a quote-unquote trap room, where you fought a lot of creatures, all of which uh, should have been harder, but <laughs> thanks to, the, to your luck with having me roll bad, it was a very easy challenge to get through. And once you finish the challenge, uh, one of the creatures that you did not get to kill, it escaped. Uh, by using its teleportation powers, but before it did, it left you all with a very cryptic message. And that's where we left off. So, Bing Squad, you right. find yourselves in hear a... Me now? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you, Brian. <laughs> Alright, thank God. Uh, you do find yourselves in a very dark and kind of damp room. One would say thank you, even. And that's where we left off. So, Bean Squad, what are you doing? Uh, Alright, let's see where we were. Okay. We took a, sh a short rest, remember? And we were going to loot. Is, the, is everyone agreeing with that? <clears throat> uh, did you all take a short rest? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So being squad, you did uh, prepare the room as best as you could before taking a short rest. And I imagine that during that time, some of you also went and... Some of you also went and uh, took some time to loot the bodies. I don't imagine that you're going to skip on the short rest to loot the bodies. No. no. Okay. So it's going to take you even longer to take a, a short rest and then start to loot the bodies. So you all defeated some white and a another creature. I imagine that you're gonna be looting all of them, right? Uh, before that, even though we took a short rest, are the Sifo dying okay? Uh, no, not really. Uh, one of them did take some damage. Uh, quite a lot of damage, and the other two are kind of have been pelted by the fireball. Which one of them took the most damage? Number three took a lot of damage. All right, I'm gonna go and heal him. Poor Hilsdin. Uh, he was blasted by the fireball. He failed his saving throw and took uh, 23 points of damage. And he has 24 hit points total. Maximum, that is. Uh, he has 24 maximum? 
Yes. And how much is he at now? Uh, seven. All right, yeah, he I'm got a little heal. healing from my healing spirit. Yep. Um, I'm going to use healing hands on him. Okay, how much are you healing for, Summerlad? Uh, that it's ten. Ten. <laughs> yeah, healing hands is ecstatic. Doesn't roll. It's just an ability. Okay. So you heal him for ten, and now he is at the same health as all the other same days. And now, also, you guys are looting some monsters. Let me find the book with them. These are from the Americanus. All right. Uh, they're looting. I'm looking around for any sign of that tentacle thing. Uh, okay. First and foremost, who is doing the looting? Um, I I'll imagine Draco because he because he has expertise in it, right? Yep. Uh, you can mind everybody. I'm running from mobile right now. Because, uh, for, for Brian, I didn't get any of what you said. Sorry. Uh, just bear in mind. I'm on mobile. I'm on a phone. Okay. Sounds like you're in a busy place, regardless. So Drake can. In the car. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Draken, you are looting, and anyone else is assisting you? With the looting endeavor? Yeah, I'll be assisting them. Okay, alright. So, uh, Draken or Matthias, whichever one of you find uh, fuel that you're better suited for, for the task, please go ahead and give me a religion check. Mm, I am not proficient in religion. Neither am I, but what's your intelligence mod? One. Mine is three. Yeah, so go for it, Mr. Smarty Pants. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, Draken and Matthias, the both of you... Uh, take your sweet, sweet, sweet time going through these creatures. Uh, Matthias doing more of the looting itself, like really getting his hands in there and searching, sifting through what's left over of the corpse while you, Drake, can go around uh, making mental notes here and there of things you should put down in your bestiary later. And you all, with a 20. Uh, let me think for a second. That's a CR five monster. Yeah, you succeed the test. Because I'm using another book now with different loot. Well, that's crazy. So Draken from uh, there were two of those guys. So you get <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna start saying a lot of loot. So make sure to write it down. You're gonna go ahead and get uh, two deadlock eyes. Two dead deathlock hearts. And two def deathly claws. Can I uh, attempt to grab their teeth? Uh, they don't have teeth per se. Like, uh, these are, <clears throat> uh, actually, no, never mind, I'm thinking of the white, uh, yeah, sure, as, the, uh, as all of the, as Draken and Matthias go through the, the corpses, uh, they also go and pull out a few thieves to, yeah, a few thieves to give you eventually. So, now, hey, well, don't forget. Um, Draken, I would like you to go ahead and give me three uh, intelligence tests. No advantage. Straight intelligence. For each one of those items. Uh, 
Okay, 11 as you try to uh, get a sense of the eyes, then the heart. And finally for the claws, it strikes a little bit and you get uh, an inkling of, a, of an idea. As far as the eyes are concerned, you're not incredibly sure of what to do with it. You really have no idea of what you could use these eyes for. Neither the heart. We imagine that being what they are, you would probably use that in some uh, as alchemical uh, reagents or components in some sort of potion that might be very disgusting to even give it a try. As for the claw, you do get some idea of what they can be used for. Uh, you 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 get this very dark and uh, negative energy. Uh, that still lingers on this claw even though the creature is no longer animated uh, it, the negative energy as essence is still in the claw so you know that if you were to uh, use this claw as a magical component uh, actually as a focus to cast a spell that deals necrotic damage you can reroll once Did you get that? Yep. There you go. More using. That still is very useful for me if I roll a, a, crit, a critical fail on inflict wound. Uh, yeah, you can reroll once, but you have to keep the second result, even if it is a one again. It's better than nothing. <clears throat> I put them in the bag. Uh, it does require attunement, though. Okay. Uh, for the second creature now, uh, again, Draken or <laughs> Matthias, whichever one of you feel best uh, adequate for the task, please give me a religion check with advantage. That's totally you, Draken, again. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in the meanwhile... Uh... Natural 20. Oh, there you go. In the meanwhile, Flint, go ahead and give me a perception check. Uh, Grath said he was sticking with me, so does that help anything? Uh, I don't know. What are you guys doing to assist Flint? Assist. I'm just looking for that tentacle creature, because if I see it, I'm going to shoot it. Well, I'm with him, and I have the shield, too. Alright. And looking for around the room... If any more of these tentacle things are around, and we're trying to look for it, and I am skilled in per perception. Okay. I have advantage on perceptions because of the shields. Alright, so Flint, go ahead and give me a uh, perception check with advantage. As I try to get a sense of what's going on here. And your party mates are helping you. Bleh. 16, alright. Uh, that really sucks. As you look around, not only at what you can see, but also trying to get a mental picture of this whole place, this chamber, you get the sense that although you, you cannot see other passages <clears throat> in, your, in the path that you took here, uh, you feel like there might have been other... <clears throat> there might be other chambers in this whole complex that you cannot access because there's no direct way towards them and you feel also that the creature uh, knowingly knew that those chambers were there and teleported over there as you go around knocking on walls you feel that some all the walls are very very solid and uh, it's it's very thick wall. You, you, if you were to teleport into another room, it would take several, uh, several many many feet to get to another chamber. So it it, it ain't it, it is not closed. That's what I mean to say. Regardless, Draken. Once again, you and Matthias go around sifting through the dead bodies. You do find uh, two more Deathlock eyes. Another Deathlock heart. Wow. 
Yep. Um, we do find two ounces of phantom dust. Uh, go ahead and roll me 2d6, please. Draken. So fucking. Okay, 10. You get 10, um, 10 vials of Deathlock blood. As you. I don't have 10 vials. Okay, you have enough to fill up 10 vials, so fill as many as you have. Do you have any empty potion bottles? That was included. Okay. Let me check. So you have enough to fill 10 vials of uh, Devlock Def blood. Lastly, I would like you to give me... L leave, leave it all inside the my alchemy kit. Uh, lastly, give me two intelligence checks, Draken, as you try to uh, gauge what in the world you could possibly do with Phantom Dust or Deathlock Blood. That's good enough for the first, for the second. You didn't see the first one? Uh, just roll me the second one. First one was a six. Oh, sorry, didn't didn't see that. Okay, six. Nice. You, yeah, I saw it. I see it now. Uh, as for the phantom dust, you're not entirely sure what the hell you can do with this. Um, you're not even not not even sure that this is. Uh, how different this might be from ash itself. But you do feel a sparkling of arcane energy in there, and you you feel like you could, you could use this as it is, as a dust itself. You're just not sure how or where. As for the Deathlock blood, uh, you get a very good sense of what it is, and you know that just like the claws, you can use this on a as a chemical component. I mean, as an as an arcane component when casting a spell, it can. Instead of using whatever component you normally would use, you can use one vial of Deathlock blood uh, to enhance the power of any necrotic spells. So whenever you cast a, sp a spell that deals necrotic damage and you hit it, you get to deal 2d8 more necrotic damage. Are you going to give that to me? Yep. You get seven vials of it. Ten vials? Seven. Seven? I said leave the rest of the blood inside the alchemy kit. I don't have that many vials. I have vials with me. Uh, Sam, the alchemy kit, it's not necessarily... You don't have vials, like, left over. Just carrying them around. The alchemy kit Oh, is... yes, but I have two vials spared that I... That I puts the okay so you, if you have two spare vials you can fill two more vials with the deathlock blood which brings it up to a nine total yeah that's pretty good so when you're casting a, a spell that deals necrotic damage uh, you have to announce that you're also using the deathlock blood as a component for the spell Okay, that's only one vial missing. That's a good deal. Okay. Uh, lastly, Matthias <laughs> and Draken, once again, one last final religion check with advantage. Go for it. Hang on. As this, as this time now, you go to the big ass creature in the middle of the room, the bone call, and you're gonna try and break it down into pieces, and that's gonna take you all quite some time. 21. 21. Okay. Uh, that is not enough. Uh, 
as it happens. Uh, this okay. creature is gigantic, and as you try to really go through it, uh, you cannot really make heads or tails of what you're seeing, what you're looking at, and how to deal with the with all of this. The massive size of this creature uh, really baffles you in the way of how do I uh, break it down into components that I can use for stuff. So spell try. Come again. Uh, since it's religion, why don't you let me try? Uh, because the test has already been attempted. You can't reattempt this test. So, uh, Draken, go ahead and roll 1d3. You're gonna have what? 1d3, you're gonna have to type that in. Because you only managed to scavenge one of the materials that this creature has. Uh, since there is three possibilities, roll 1d3. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so, if you type forward slash r space 1d3, hit enter, it should work. Yes. There you go. Chew. Okay. So... <clears throat> Uh, you, Draken, managed to scavenge uh, uh, two of the bone claw claws, which are gigantic, and the claw of this creature is as big as an arm, one of your you guys' arms, and go ahead and give me one intelligence check to see if you know what to do with this, but as it is, you, you'll see that it's very sharp and very dangerous. To even handle as uh, the creature is is dead. Eleven. All right. You imagine that you could possibly turn this into a weapon, and that is all I you mean, can get. Turning it this. like into a sword or something. I mean, or an axe. Let's see what we can get out of it. How heavy are these things? Mm, everything else. Has negligible weight. The bone claw claws they are heavier, and uh, each one of them weighs five pounds. I got how many? A two. Two. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> and as you all spend quite some time in here. You, all of you go went ahead and did a short rest, so you recover uh, half of your maximum hit dice. You can roll hit dice also to recover HP that you may have lost, and all of you recover abilities and other things that you recover during a short rest. Doug, have we been in for longer than eight hours? I need to know uh, for my dark vision spell that is on flame. Uh, let me see. So you came in at <clears throat> you have been in for five hours. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um. Well, considering the fact that things have been magical here, I'd like to cast uh, Detect Magic as a ritual. Okay. So, Summer Lad, you take some time. 11 minutes, if, one, if I'm not mistaken. To cast... Uh, yeah, 11 minutes. To, to cast uh, detect, detect Magic. Everyone waits patiently yes. for it. By the way, the... Symphonians also recover all their health uh, as part of the short rest. And as you finish casting the ritual, Summerled, you do feel some magical essence of sorts, some magical aura, uh, kind of all over the place. It's very faint, but this whole chamber seems to be infused with some sort of magic. I'm not entirely sure of, of why. But it seems to be just a, an abjuration uh, form of magic. Very simple, very, very 
very low level stuff. Uh, furthermore, you do feel some magical essence uh, emanating from the door as well. Well, as always, another trap. Yes, as always, another trap. And I have a weird feeling that there is a lot of magic around here. It's very faint on this floor, but there probably is more. Uh, when you arrive at the door, <clears throat> Summerled, you feel uh, not only evocation, uh, uh, evocation magic coming from the door itself, and this time around, as you look around uh, knowingly, when you look around the frame of the door, you do see runes, but you sense that the magic is now coming only from the runes. The magic, the door itself has been infused with magic in a way that you're not entirely certain how. But you do feel a sense of evo uh, an evocation, uh, an evocation spell coming from the runes, but from the door itself, you feel an abjuration uh, magic effect, uh, effect in place. So, being squad, what are you gonna do? Do you want me to dispel this one? Do you want me to dispel this one? Hmm. By the way, have Fireball. any... <laughs> have any of Grace, you... Uh, Dracon says to dispel it. Yeah. But um... have any of you investigated the door yet? No. no. Okay. I'm not no. touching it. Okay. Dracon will. Uh, Draken, as you approach the door, you do find that there are text written on the door in... Make a history check, Draken. Can I help him in any way with that? Sure. If you help... Because I am, I am proficient in history. Uh, then you can make the test instead. Uh, uh Lilith. Oh, you already rolled, and you rolled a 20. Okay. So, um, uh, Draco, go ahead and roll again, because you would have advantage, because Lilith would be helping you uh, to decipher the text that is written on the door. Okay, 20 it is. Uh, you do see written on the door an archaic form of common. Uh, as, as best as you can tell, it is common, but it's an, an old form. Uh, it's still using some words that you don't use anymore, some weird contractions. Uh, the language itself reads weird, but you can still understand it because it's a older form of common. And it presents a riddle to you. Okay. It reads, I require as many of it as there is letters on my name. I, what I require has a head of gold and a tail of gold, but has no body. And you do see that on the door there are uh, there's a little carving of uh, small hands uh, cupped forward, like if waiting for something. Can you type the riddle in chat? Sure. Hmm. This is your thing. I'm thinking. Grath, help pack leader. I require as many of it as there are letters in my name. I require that which has a head of gold and a tail of gold, but has no body. What about gold piece? It has head and tail. It's the best thing I, yeah. How many letters? And it would say, name? how many letters are in my name? Is so the name that... written anywhere? Can you drop a coin one by one until the thing opens? Was 
there, like a slot. And then I remember he saw hands, but... Yeah, there are hands cupping forward, uh, waiting for something to be deposited there. Can I just give the hand some gold? Okay. I mean, they're gold coins, aren't they? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna drop gold coins in one by one. Okay. Just to see what happens. Alright. So... so... One... Two... Uh... Try maybe four. Four. Okay, Lilith. As you're dropping the fourth uh, gold coin, you wait for a while, kind of expect, uh, expecting something to happen, and well, what do you know? It does happen. The the hands they seem to come to life. They seem to to animate themselves and close around the gold coins and retract into the door itself. And as they do, you just hear this very loud noise of uh, shifting of stone and wood, pretty much. It's a very natural sound of uh, of stone and wood kind of gr grinding against one another. And then eventually you just hear this very loud uh, clacking noise and the doors, they just uh, part open and they give opening into it and give him passage. To the rest of this whole place. Oh, Greth was smart. Greth was smart. Greth was very smart. I was overthinking it. I had thought it had something to do with like letters or something. Yeah. It Although it's usually a silver tongue, not a gold tongue that uh, people are described as having. And I wasn't sure how to give it a tongue. Um, so, is that the- Is it a what, Sam? Is the door going to open? The door is open already. Yeah, but there is no map. Uh, there is no map to be had. It's on the other side of the door, Doug. Uh, you just see the, that a, a corridor extends further and further and further. No light whatsoever. It's just a dark corridor. Okay, uh, so because of that, I'm going to take a small pebble that should be around here, light it up and throw it, see what... Okay, you don't really need to because uh, you, Lilith and many other people here have dark vision and you are able to see a bit further into the corridor. You see that it's just a corridor that just extends as you light up the pebble and throw it in uh, very far away into the corridor you just see that eventually it reaches a wall uh, and appears that the corridor kind of makes a curve to the side where you stop being able to see things you also see that the, the, the corridor slopes downwards as well okay then I guess we should go ahead might as well. All right. Did the Centrodyne know anything about what we've been seeing? I don't remember if we asked that last game or not. Uh, not at all. Did Centrodyne? They, I think they tried asking about just... the doors. They never seen stuff like this before, but they could. They have heard stories of things such as what you have witnessed being possible uh, in general according to stories of their culture and whatnot I'm gonna go down the hallway okay so Lilith you lead the party as everyone descends down the hallway that uh, after a few feet uh, turns uh, starts curving to the side and keeps sloping downwards eventually reaches a staircase that goes down and after a while of descending some staircases uh, you find yourselves in another corridor that eventually gives to a cavern a cavernous uh, walls and floor and it keeps alternating between cavern floor and walls and then worked stone all around until uh, you walk for what it feels like an hour until you reach 
uh, small lights in the distance. And as you stop and try to look a little bit forward, uh, the, the, the same things that are with you, they kind of they, they shift ahead and tug on Draken's shirt and says, I think that's another settlement. I think we have found it. Have we? Well, Holy we still crap. need to be... Come again? We still need to be careful. Well, the place with lights is most likely to be a settlement as opposed to the uh, magic trapped corridor we just went through. That is true. true. Well, let's go then. All right. Uh, all of you. Uh, uh, since uh, since uh, Sam cast light on that, have all the light on my bracers. And then it was side. Oh, I, I put it back. Don't worry. Okay. Um, in that case, can and he said, I roll the first spell? Come up again, Brian? I didn't hear what you say. Uh, Brian said that he is going to roll for stealth. Okay. So, Brian, I mean, fell. You decide to stealth uh, amidst the, the ruins here. So, go ahead and roll for your stealth. And is anyone else trying to stealth their way around here? No, I'm gonna stick with the Senfidane. Okay. Yeah, I'm not stealthy, and I'm gonna stick with them too. Alright. Not stealthy. <laughs> meanwhile, I am all right. meanwhile, Fel and Flint, both of you, start tiptoeing around, trying to keep to the shadows as best as you can. Uh, even though in the back of your mind you're thinking, oh, yeah, they kind of do see in the dark, but still, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna try. And eventually you do reach uh, this guided by Lilith and the other three, Saint Fidei and Draken, who speaks the their language. Uh, all of you uh, approach these ruins with the lights, and as you get closer and closer, you do see now that a uh, couple Saint Fidei's, they seem to come forward. Uh, they look well, well enough. They look sort of nourished. Uh, but they look uh, very uh, kind of heavily scarred around uh, around their bodies. They are holding they are holding weapons, and they they have a lot of scars uh, on their arms and some bandages strapped over here and there. And they do seem somewhat guarded as they see you come by, but they seem more so confused. And intrigued by the three safe things that are there with you. Halt there. Who are you? He seems to be uh, the same thing that receives you, seems to be pointing the question at the group rather than one individual. Is he asking in common? And in under common. Under common, very good. Which means yep. Phil and Dracon can understand him, and the Senfordine can. Yes. And I think that's it. And maybe Hantai. I'll just say that we are escorts. Uh, okay. Well, since this is a common thing for us, I will go and cast tongues on Lilith because she is the most valuable player for this situation. <laughs> Do you have a level 3 slot? I have a level 3 slot left here. Well, that's good. Anti says he'll use an action to uh, understand under common. Okay. So now the only people who don't understand under common is Flint and Graf. And, and Matthias. Yeah, and me, I'm casting on Lilith, not myself. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so half the group understands under common now. Um, the fell you do say to them that you're their ex escorts, 
Lilith, is there anything else you would like to add? No, that's a pretty accurate description so far. Okay. So Waiting to see how it plays out first. So, Fel, as you go, as a step forward and say that, the, the safe day who's holding out a spear, he looks around and sees all of you and says, And who are you three? You're not one of ours. Where are you, where do you come from? And then the same things who are with you, Stubhard, he takes the lead and says, My name is Stubhard. We come from another settlement which were, which we lost contact with you a long time ago. We come from a little bit further north. And we have we are looking for other same uh, day settlements here in the underground and we know of yours and some others but we decided to come here and see if you're if you're still okay if you're still alive and if you ex still exist at this point the the guard same for he looks over all of you try more so looking at the everyone else uh everyone else the that uh, that 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 is not a safe thing, and also kind of looking a lot at Fell with some you would say a mistrustful glare, as it says. All right then, come, follow me. I'm gonna be quick before they come back. And he turns around and starts ushering you into the ruins again. Come again, Brian? Before what? I did not get what uh, you he said. He said before what comes back. Ah, <clears throat> okay. Before, uh, before the the creatures. There lingers outside our village. Have, have you not encountered them? We ran into a couple of things, but from the way we came, they're not there anymore. One teleported away, but the rest are gone. Hmm. Well, maybe you have been lucky. Maybe we all will be lucky now, but... Regardless, it's not safe to walk around these tunnels alone. Come on. And they finally bring you into their village. Which, uh, as you come in and look around, you can see that it's um, kind of kind of like the you get the same vibe. From the village that you had seen under uh, under your own manor, like just a handful of people, not a not a gigantic uh, Saint Fidei population. Uh, but the people here they all look more battle ready than the uh, than the ones back at your manor. The the ones at your manor they just kind of look like disheartened and and apat apathetic. These ones here they they look much more wary and. And attentive, looking around uh, here and there, and yes, Draco, they kind of—they look, look like they've been fighting a lot. Yes, they do look like a warrior clan, and from the reports that you start hearing, uh, the stories that they start telling of the creatures lingering on the outside, you do get a sense that yeah, they not only have been trying to explore outside of their village, but also have been trying to repel attacks that have been happening on their village. Uh, is there anything in? You said we hear, we heard reports. Is there anything in us to look in this book to see what the monster might be, or do we not know enough yet? Uh, from what they describe, the, the the monsters and the creatures, most of them seems to be uh, creatures that have come across already before. Uh, the 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 whites and the the umber hulks. Many other creatures. They do also speak of the uh, uh, the rust monster, 
They do, however, speak. Things. They do, however, speak of creatures I have not really encountered. Uh, they do speak of a uh, of a uh, what 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 what's it called? Of an uh, earth elemental and big ass spider monsters. Big ass spiders. Yes. Okay. All kind of shivers at the mention of spiders. Those who have not encountered uh, as you explore this whole place here. And we would prefer not to. We may have to. I want to say to uh, the Sephidine there that you know, I can understand that you look like a, a warring clan group of fighters. And that's how I was introduced myself. Oh, it's really hard to, to get what you're saying. Uh, but they do... Uh, they do spend some time sharing the stories of these creatures, what they are, where they do come from, and how they have been dealing with them thus far. And the leader of this village eventually comes forward. Uh, he warily introduces himself to you all. Keeping, keeping keeping himself guarded. Uh, he introduces himself as Morich. And I would imagine that you do want me to put the name in chat, right? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, Morich. Introduces, introduces himself as the leader of the St. Fidane settlement here. I'm gonna introduce myself and then introduce everybody else in the park. Alright. So... Uh, all of you, one by one, I imagine, go introducing yourselves. Uh, Stupid Heart also chimes in every now and then like pointing at whoever, whichever one of you are speaking at the moment and being like, oh, they're great warriors, they, you, you, you need to see, they, they have battled so many creatures, they undid all the traps that, that led to this place and they rescued us from our other predicament, they allowed me to come back to my village, they are great heroes. Uh, Fel, you said that you want to say you all look like warriors. I come from a blue race the same way. Um, the Morich, he thinks for a second before responding. Well, I imagine that we have some, we share some traditions then, but I would not be familiar at all with the, with the villages and the tribes of the surface. We have lost our contact with the surface and other same things a long time ago. <laughs> Do you know how long ago? It has been a while. The hundred years, hundred fifty thousand. Few two lifetimes, <laughs> eight lifetimes. A century ago, one of our longest tunnels collapsed, uh, which connected us to the Saint Fidelis of the north, of the of the shore, as this one is called, or so my ancestors have told me. But it wasn't until very recently that another set of tunnel collapsed, uh, tunnels connecting us to the to the valley Saint Fidelis. The ones uh, that, by your map, you would call them the ones beneath the 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 peak forest. It hmm. wasn't. It wasn't until very recently that our tunnel collapsed. Some a few decades ago, maybe. 20 years at most. And when did the monster?
monster attacks start? They have always ha been happening. Every now and then we tried to explore a little bit more of the underground. Go here, go there, try to find out where we could go as some tunnels kept opening as the creatures traveled around and other tunnels closed. We needed to explore constantly to make sure that we had that we knew our way around and these creatures have always been here one of our ancestors actually tells us of a story that of old summoning rituals that our ancestors long 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 dead ancestors from centuries ago have tried to perform to summon or banish creatures and most without success they have been able to summon things but not the things that we wanted to summon and some of us do believe that these are the creatures that we fight up to this day the creatures not of this plane Bell and Dracon have questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, the da, 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 fell. Uh, to answer your question, they look around one another. You see that the the leader more rich and the other uh, lieutenant same for days here. They do look around and. And seem to nod to one another. Well, we would very much appreciate to be able to explore a little bit more here without risking our own, but lately most tunnels have closed. We are afraid that there are no ways to travel around underground, and some of these ways are beyond dangerous, and we seal those tunnels on purpose. I don't know that you have seen a creature, a gigantic floating eye. Does that have tentacles? Yes. We never faced that. We didn't? Isn't that the thing that almost killed Flint? No, he's talking no, he's about like, what, what? He's talking of a different creature. Oh, different one, okay. A Never gigantic mind. floating eye. With oh, smaller it's eyes surrounding it. <laughs> Don't tell me it's another beholder. It's another beholder. God damn it. We knew that one of those was lingering around and we decided to sell to seal the tunnels rather than to allow it to find our village. I don't know if it still roams the underground or not. But we fear that the most safe passage now for us to reconnect with the other villages is through the surface. But I, I assure that Stubhard there already told you that the sun sort of disagrees with us. And we've informed Stubhard that there's a time coming within 14 days, I think it is. Where there will be no sun for five days. Well, that would be a great opportunity for us to to go out then and reconnect with everyone else. And Draken, as to answer your questions, they do have a book. Yes. Just uh, the one. I mean, they do have like they do have books as like they don't have books itself uh they don't really read the books because it's the same uh how do i explain this they they have a lot of stories that they tell one another like uh folklore and whatnot but as far as books go they only have this the this this few handful of books that are like 
uh, true scholarly for this village of warriors to stop and study. They are more focused in not dying than to study old history. But they do have some books that they have preserved over time for whatever reason. None of these books did really do call for attention. Some of those are like uh, Drake and sifting through the books. You do recognize that they are very, very, very old studies on like herbs, plants, and animal forms and other things. And as you read through these things, uh, you do recognize what they are talking about, but it is also very archaic. They're talking about commonplace plants as if it was something very rare and talking about animals as some uh, very, very mystical creatures and beasts, but they're talking about very, very uh, common fauna, really. Or at least fauna that you know very well by this point. Uh, there is one book, though, the only one that do comes to mind. Uh, actually, not to mind, but the one that actually feels worthwhile having as you sift through the books, uh, which seems to be a more detailed account of the War of the Almighty. It seems to be a more complete version of that book with. Uh, as, almost as if as written the same event but written by another person which it was in fact because it, it, it is totally in under common well if it's in under common I can't read it but Stubhart can read it I can only speak it uh huh. indeed because I have the tongue spell not comprehend languages um <laughs> Stubhard does looks over the book and goes through some passages and says, Wow, yes, this is fascinating. Wow. I did not know that there was so much going on in the world. Or have been well, going on. It's a busy place. Well, there is a lot of knowledge in, in here. Thank you so much. Okay. Can we bring this back to our home village? And the the other thing, uh, more rich seems to seems to agree with, with not only the prospect of Stubhard having the book, but also you uh, serving as escorts to protect uh, explorers back and forth between the villages. They seem to think of this as a very good agreement. Well, this is much easier than the last time we met these people. Yeah, we almost got killed the last time. <laughs> I feel like it was heading in that direction, yeah. But if if they sealed off all of the tunnels or they have collapsed, where are the monsters coming from? Uh, from as best as you can tell and gather, it's from the passage that you yourselves took to come here. But... <laughs> <laughs> but there well, was only, <laughs> only one way in and out, and we killed everything. Yes. Oh no, they weren't... Have they been fighting a lot of monsters recently? Because, I mean... Also... Would it be maybe, maybe they... Would, they didn't trap the doors, did they? Or uh, did they? No, they didn't. As you described the traps, they have absolutely uh, no idea of how to produce themselves traps like that. Like that. So are they living in like the same kind of dilapidated ruins that the dwarf ones were? Uh, yes, these are ruins, but they are in a in a little in a slightly better condition. They seem to have uh, really gone through the effort of fortifying these ruins to make their settlement more defensible and made 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 sure to also clear like like the streets to well quote unquote streets to allow the same things to quickly go from place to place without staying outside for too long in case they need to hunker down can i describe to them 
the dates of when the sta when we fixed the statue and asked them if they experienced anything happening when that happened. Um, when you describe like it, it was a couple of days ago. When you describe the day and whatnot, they don't seem to know what you're talking about. So there was no noticeable change in the monster behavior or anything. Or they didn't hear it themselves. Uh, to be fair, you did travel for one hour to reach this place, so it's quite far yeah, away. I don't know how big the magic extends on it. I don't know this stuff. <laughs> That's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> Makes sense. But what about the, um, the magic? that Sam felt that was kind of everywhere. Is it still going on in the ruins, or is it... The Detect Warriors Magic has already... Uh, has already w went off. Uh, Summerlet, it was an abjuration spell on the chamber itself. You imagine that it's um, some sort of effect that would uh, contain whatever happened there in there. Okay, so it was limited to that room. Yes. Like all these other chambers that you have gone through before reaching over there, they have uh, each had their own trap, but the trap was centered to the room itself. Well, Stupard's meaning is people. Does he have questions about them and what they know and all of this beyond just the one book? Um, because this is why we came here is for for him and his people to meet them. Uh, as Stubhard himself is uh playing the diplomat, kind of not getting too far from all of you guys. Uh, the other two same things. Uh, Hughesdean and Tierleg, they have. They ha they're gone. <laughs> they're talking to everyone and meeting all the places and all the all of the people and talking extensively to everyone. And every now and then you also see that Stubhard kind of steals away, go goes around for a moment to talk to people and gather some uh, knowledge and then come back to the group. And he, he keeps on back and forth, kind of sticking to you guys, but then going here and there to really see everything that he can see. Uh, for what he imagines is the short while that you'll be here for. Fell has put a comment in chat again. Oh my god. Uh, you have already killed an undead version of that was has been plaguing them. Uh, that question intrigues them. Because they're not entirely sure of what you're talking about. An undead version of... The big eye, flo big floating eye thing. It's the same thing, but bone. They imagine like we know we have a magical tradition as part of our species, which is we are born with the arcane flowing in our veins, and we know a thing or two about magic. But I guarantee you that. No Saint Fidane is capable of necromancy. I don't think he was suggesting that your people made it, but we did find it. Yes, and I, what I mean to say is, we ourselves could not have done that. So, either it did that to itself, or there is something else down here that can do that. To be fair, I have been working under the assumption that your entire people as a whole have experienced one great calamity that has stopped you from living in peace and moving forward and progressing, and it seems to be affecting each different group differently, but whether or not this is a magical curse or some sort of divine intervention, or just me seeing patterns where none exist, we'll find out. At this point, I think it would be beneficial for all of the groups to meet up together. I agree. Uh, at this point, uh, Fivnet is about the best time to have that happen. Yes, it is. Fivnet. 
it's too hard he cuts in and says I actually think that it was just really bad luck when you think about it from what I'm reading from this book at least it seems like we were just cursed but with bad luck and a lot of things happened ever since ever and we were just in the wrong place at the wrong time that's possible it's also possible that uh, bad luck is a curse from a divine being or a goddamn deck of cards <laughs> um, but I don't know I have ideas but I'm probably wrong <laughs> furthermore after after a while they do invite you guys to to rest for a while before they send out uh, their own expedition party to uh, to try and reconvene with the with the St. Fidens of Dorf and also uh, check out with the other two St. Fidens groups that, you, uh, that they know that exist. So are we going to have more St. Fidens to escort around? Uh, yes, of course, why not? Hooray! Uh, I mean... More. What's up? I mean, I guess we signed up for it. I mean, we are basically trying to reconnect the people, so... Uh, as... Are we going to have to go back to Dorf, then to the Peak Forest, or...? We're going to stop at Dorf anyway and resupply. <clears throat> yeah, that's probably smart. Uh, Lilith. Yeah? Should, do you think I should ask them about my eye? I know the the last one, the last one's interaction wasn't that great, but do you think they know at least a little bit? We can try asking about your eye, but they don't seem to be too research oriented here. These seem the more battle oriented type. But they could uh, offer some, even the smallest bit of new information can be helpful. And maybe once we get everybody together, we'll have enough resources, so we should. Do you know what it should be, Let's All right, ask them then. about the eye. Alright then, take my helmets off and show my eye. Alright. Uh, Sonalad, as you show them your eye, and what else do you do? Well, Stubhart mentioned something, I forget what he named it, but we're going to ask basically if we know anything about it's it. It's the uh, Eye of Clarity or something like that? Yes. He said it was the Eye of Clarity. Yes, but are you just showing them your eye or are you saying something as well? As I you? can't speak with them, but I will ask Lilith to tell them that I was born with this and it's basically been with me since I was a kid, and that uh, when we met with the others, Saint Fadine, they knew a little bit, so we were hoping that you knew at least a, a little bit more too, or show tell us what you know. Okay, they do look at you, Summerland, and Morich says. Uh, well, he says true, whoever can understand under common. That, we know nothing about that, but I do remember there was this one Saint-Fedine, I don't know if they're still alive. Uh, Washe, they're... They're in under the peak forest, and if there's anyone who knows about all these arcane, well, arcane meanings for that, it's them. You said their name was Washe. Yes. Let me. Wakanda forever. <laughs> Put that in the chat. All right. 
Well, I'm going to reflect Why do I like that Sam name? that there's a Sunfidine named Rache, Washe, underneath the Peak Forest, who, if anybody is going to know, it's going to be them. Well, we know where our focus should be. It's the next logical step to go there anyway, and then to go to the Reach Forest at the end. The question is, will we have enough time to group everybody, and where are they all going to go? The two places we've been have been not the best living conditions. Um, as... They're not sure about that. They seem to be just expecting more so a connection to be to be made and then logistics to be to be prepared afterwards like, this is like, more getting communications up yes knowing that they are alive that so they have something to look forward to, instead of just walking by blindly in these under underground caverns Where did they tell that Washea was, or...? It was under the peak forest, I think. Okay. <laughs> right, Doug? Yes, yes. Under yes. Uh, the peak forest, which is cl very close to Hokengen. Hooray, we get to go back to Hokengen. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be fun. Yeah, let's keep our heads down. Let's take the mountain rush first. Yeah, that's actually what I was about to say. If we're going to go to Hokengen, can we go there via Malmarsh so we can go pick up those guns if they've been recharged? Well, it might be faster to not go to Hokengen and just go to Malmarsh straight to uh, the Peak Forest because it's relatively the same distance from one city to the other and that way we don't have to travel the extra distance yeah it's faster to Malmarsh to the Peak Forest than Malmarsh to Hokengen to the Peak Forest yeah according to the map um the map it's the map it's the map it's the map it's the map so, maybe no. after we reach far as we can go to Nade and maybe have that person there take a look at my arm. So from where you are, you can either go to Gimberg, then to Hokengen, then to the Peak Forest. Or you can go back to Dorf to resupply and check your manor and also reconnect these guys to this other group beyond your manor. And then go to Mouse Marsh, then go to the Peak Forest. I think that second option is probably best. Yeah, go to Dorf, resupply... Pick up whatever you need. Drop the people off at the manor. Alright. So, the this group right here, uh, Morich and these other safe days, they were looking wary, but they stop, uh, they stop looking so wary after they have spent so long with you guys now talking and discussing ideas, and they invite you to rest and recuperate before you set out in your journey, if you Yay. wish to. So, being squad. I want to see if I can find uh, someone, one of their, one of their warriors to spar with. I thought you were gonna spar with Lilith. Lilith Lilith's gonna figure too. out how to spar with everybody. <laughs> Pretty much. We need yeah, to yeah, spar with. Yeah, yeah but they've been fighting this for a while. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. So. Are you guys taking a rest here then? I'm okay with it if everybody else in the group is fine with staying Ask, the night. Asking if we are going to rest here? Is that it? I yes. mean, rest until it's dark so that way it's not hard on the Symphodine to travel. I mean, yeah. Sounds reasonable. Well, right now it's midnight outside, so. Is it? Matthias, you know that it. Matthias, you know that it is not midnight outside. Yeah, I was gonna say. Does the time Matthias know what time it is outside? Uh, both fell and both fell and Matthias think for a second and they think 
It feels like six in the morning. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we should probably wait here until the sun is at least declining, and then head out. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's gonna take at least like one hour for you guys to get out of these ruins and back into the into the surface. So. All right. So in the meantime, sure we can go ahead and take a rest, but I do want to spar with Lilith in front of some of the other board. Let's do it. Come on. It'll be fun. Before Fell goes, before Fell, uh, Summer Lad will ask if we can give you some hugs because he wants some. Uh, He's gonna give him enhanced ability. Yeah. So, okay, okay, Summer Lad, if you really want. No, it's because lately you seem like you need a. Uh, but you've seen you lately. You need someone to have to give a hug, and I will accept that. Thank you. No, Draco. I'm not going to give him enhanced ability. I am not a cheater. All right. So you first things first, I'm contest. going to <laughs> take off the cloak of protection and my braziers of defense. To make this there. Speaking Let's do it, come on. Speaking of which, who has the the, the sphere of protection again? Summerlight. Me. Summerlight, okay. Me. Keep him hidden. Keep him secret. Keep him safe. <laughs> keep, him keep, him <laughs> keep him secret no is the best one. Alright, so... Boy. Come on, PvP, Doug, let's do it. I, I mean, sure, why not? I'm, I'm just preparing here a, a little stage for you guys. Because I didn't expect this to happen. <laughs> so, the all the the safe dance, they they start cheering monks. as as the monks, they take up to the stage, apparently. And and as you start taking, taking off your magical enhanced shenanigans that you have uh, all of them start instantly realizing what is going to happen here uh, some sort of battle is going to happen and these two monks are mm -hmm. going to go to town with one another uh, battle wise it's a friendly sparring combat that is entirely non-lethal yes, a f a totally friendly uh, combat but still uh, these guys, they cheer the opportunity to spar uh, friendly uh, to do friendly spars without the risk of death because they face it so frequently and they cheer uh, they they embrace the opportunity to have an encounter that does not risk their lives so <laughs> let it fell you are reunited in this little arena here because I can bother That's to do key points fly can you bother to do anything a little bit more complex than that? Let's Sorry. get ready to rumble. This go. is really going to come down on the who can stun lock who. And... Who can stun lock for half a turn? Well, I mean, whoever gets the stun locked is going to have like two turns in a row. And all of you guys are there watching your friends uh, slap the heck out of each other. Uh, I don't Fair know. doesn't wear armor. He doesn't have the, the cloak and the braces anymore, it's just monk on monk. No man. Oh, man. Yeah, that's what I meant by he removed some armor, because that gave me some very valuable armor. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, it was like a plus three to AC. God damn it, I don't have the... Yep, so it's, it's just Dex and Wisdom. wisdom. <laughs> So, uh, all of them just kind of gather around and to watch the, the, the two of you uh, spar, friendly spar, and lots of safe things just show up to watch you and cheer on for this very, very, very nice possible combat that this is going to happen. And yep. you just see Wash, uh, not Washay, sorry, you just see more reach 
uh, come up to to the side and say like in a big announcer voice like announcing to the whole village uh, now we are born as warriors we grow up live as warriors and we die as warriors but let's not forget that before we are warriors we are living beings with feelings and lives that are not completely dominated by war we shall celebrate our lives by those who surround us by those who stay with us when we are not warring and to celebrate that let's see how these two friends these two acquaintances deal with one another when they are put against each other in the battlefield not for war but for honor and friendship and fell and Lilith I would like the two of you to roll initiative oh damn it fell do you have advantage on the initiative no he's on his phone so I might have done it twice no, I do not Okay, so you went seven. Thank God, I guess you go first. Okay, so... Alright, you two. Make it clean. So, uh... Um... I'm not gonna cheat. <laughs> no, I'm just excited. Well, I don't know that anyone else will even attempt to cheat. But I would hope you don't. But if you do, let me know. We will... If you cheat, Lilith will knock your teeth out. We will solve that. So Lilith, uh, both you and Fel are in front of your, uh, in front of each other. You s you bow and politely salute one another before engaging into your fisticuffs. So what are you doing? All right. Well, first I'm gonna tell Fel best of luck, and then I'm gonna punch him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, roll for an attack, I believe. Fell, I believe the 25 hits, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's roll some damage. Let me... Seven. And a key point for stunning strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It's already begun, it's already derailing. So, Fel, you have to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, uh, too bad, it's a constitution, not strength. Well. And, well, he rolled a five on that con one. <laughs> so, Fel, you feel that as Lilith steps up to you and punches you. Uh, in the solar suplex, you are completely paralyzed as you cough and you feel the air completely escape your lungs and you need a second or six seconds perhaps to regain your stance. In the meanwhile, Lilith, you get to go again. Or rather, finish your turn, rather. I get advantage because he's stunned, right? I'd say that you yes. do. Yes. Do I get sneak attack because he's stunned? Yes. Yes, you do. Very good. <laughs> Very so, good. So, uh, roll for an attack with advantage. Because sneak attack isn't managed again against just knowing how to hit. Yes, so 26 hits for your second attack, I believe. Uh, go ahead and roll damage on Fell with sneak attack. Yep, that's 8. Eight points, points of damage. Of damage. And for bonus action, the key point for flurry of blows, please. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and roll two attacks, both with advantage. It's a fourteen and an eight. Uh, I don't know that that fourteen will hit. I don't think it should. Nope. Okay. No, 
but an 18 will. So go ahead and roll for damage on that 18. Can you guys hear me or no? Uh, very You're lowly. very, very quiet, Brian. Oh no, Brian is gone. It's sad because he's losing. Hey, now. Yes. Okay, now it's better. I believe yeah. in the power of the world. 18 matches, 14 does Come again? Uh, 18 matches his AC, which means it hits, yes. and the 14 does not. So roll damage on that 18. That's 5. Okay, 5 more points of bludgeoning. So... And uh, I'm gonna knock him prone. <laughs> he okay. fails. Okay, if that's a deck save, he fails instantly because he's stunned, I believe. Yep. <laughs> Okay. So there's not much he can do. <laughs> so, Fel, you are stunned. Um, um, Lilith, um, at, the begin <laughs> at the beginning of the combat, Lilith, as soon as she finishes bowing, she just punches you, the air escapes your lung, you're completely stunned, and then she goes and whack whack. Two punches, one hits you in the face and the other one in the back of your leg. Uh, she sweeps you over and you fall down. Completely prone on the ground, still stunned, with the air completely drained from your lungs. You're, you're, you will take one turn to recuperate, which means you lose your next turn. And now, Lilith, I believe it's you again. Gee, look at that. Unless, Fel, you have anything that would allow you to escape this situation that you're in, which I don't think you do. So yeah, it is Lilith again. Alright. More punches. <laughs> Alright. And he's prone and stunned, so advantage. Advantage. 22. Hits, with roll damage hits on that. With sneak attack, because advantage. Yes. So he takes 9 points of damage. Second strike is... And uh, another key point to attempt to keep him stunned. <laughs> uh, at this point you have punched uh, uh, Fell so hard you, you see that he is looking very rough after this first punch. And uh, Fell, go ahead and give, give us a constitution saving throw. To try and not get stunned. But you are. Oh damn it. Well, ain't that a friendly Sperry? If I ever seen one. So yeah, you are completely stunned and little if you have the rest of the turn. Alright. Well, second attack. Hits. 21. <laughs> Does eight damage. Eight points of damage. And then I'm not going to fill your blow, so I'm only going to hit him one more time with a bonus action, which Wait. is a... <laughs> oh, man. So roll damage on that. For another nine points of damage. Okay, so that's... So, fell in total, you lose 17 uh, hit points, and you are brought down to five hit points. <laughs> Actually, four hit points. So I'm going to back away just a bit <laughs> and I'm going to let, I'm not going to do anything on my next turn because I do want Fel to actually do something. So Lilith, after you knock Fel down on the floor, you, you get down on one knee and punch, punch, punch him. To really beat the shit out of him as he's completely helpless on the floor, then you stand up, turns around. Takes a few steps back and then turn around and face him, completely prone on the floor, and just waits, taking this next uh, se six seconds to take a breather. So fell. Uh, at the end of Lilith's next turn, you, re you you recuperate your senses and you are able to move finally. Ow! So what are you doing? I'm gonna get up. Okay, half your movement to get up. Yep. And then what else you're doing? 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my movement to close the gap between me and Lilith. Okay. Let me move for you. And we're going to grapple. Grapple, okay. So, Fel, you attempt to use your first attack of the round to grapple Lilith. So, go ahead and roll on your grapple check. Lilith, you can contest with an acrobatics or athletics. Well, that's a natural one on my end. There you go. The spectrum. Lilith, you see the, the this... This hunching figure of Fell, completely beaten up, just inching his way towards you. But then, as soon as he, as soon as he approaches you, he just grapples you uh, under one hand, really pulling you tight in the lock. And what else are you doing, Fell? You're darting her. Nope. I'm gonna calmly say that was a good try. Now it's my turn. Okay, what are you doing for your second attack, Phil? That hits. Okay, so roll damage on that. Lilith, you suffer six points of damage. And... Yep. What else, Phil? Stunning, Stunning Strike. strike. So Lilith, go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. Trying to beat a... Well, you didn't. I want a 10. <laughs> you didn't. So yeah, you are stunned, Lilith. Stunned and grappled, might I add. So Fel, you have a bonus action. What are you doing with it? Attacking again, you have advantage on that. And 23 will hit. Yep, roll damage on that 23. As you're now grappled and you're pinning down a stunned Lilith, you just punch her in the side of the uh, of the head. Lilith, you suffer 9 points of damage and then fell. Goes ahead. And there's a flurry of blows. So second and last strike of your flurry of blows. Uh, Either one would hit. Yeah. So yeah, you do hit on that 25. So go ahead and roll for damage. Literally all four of those would hit. Oh yeah. You don't have as high as of an AC. As Fel nope, does. I haven't gotten to level 8 yet for Monk. Uh, Fel, you... I mean, Lilith, you suffer 5 points of damage. And I'm prone. <laughs> yeah, you are. So, as he's grappling you, the stunned you, Lilith, Fel just... Uh, oh, brings you down to the ground. Uh, all of this gets you completely stunned, Lilith, and you lose your turn completely. As Fel... You're up again. What are you doing with your full turn? At this moment, all of you just see the, the same Fidens in the back, all of them cheering and applauding and letting out big yells of uh, a very guttural yells of uh, uh, tribal pride, pretty much. Just He's very, very loud, like, yeah, fight, get one another. Uh, Doug? Restrain with another grapple check? How does that work? Because... Let me pull my... My... Uh, my sheet sheet here to see what restrain even means because I don't know what you mean by that uh, restrain is uh, another thing that you can do with grapple after uh, I think if I remember that 
Uh, if you can grapple a, tra a target, you can knock it prone or shove it uh, away from you. I don't know that you can restrain because restrain would actually be like uh, taking you out. Can, uh, a grappler, since Phil has the grappler feet, he can use an action to try to pen a creature. Pen a gr creature grappled by you. Do so. Make the grap grapple check. If you succeed, you and the creature are both restrained until the grapple ends. Yeah, so the both of you would be restrained. You can still attack one another. The only difference is that you would have no movement speed and disadvantage on attacks, I believe. Uh, yes. But since the both of you would be restrained, it would be straight rolls anyway. Uh, you can do that if you want, but it will do nothing. Okay, you get off Lilith, move back, use your monk heal. Uh, and key points for patience defense. What is monk heal? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, the monk heal? Yeah, just a moment. It's a it, level it, 6 open hand feature. Uh, yes. Hold up here. Wholeness of a body, there you go. Uh, yeah, as an action, you, you can regain hit points equal to three times your monk level. Okay, so that's uh, eight plus eight plus eight, twenty-four hit points. Okay. Yep, so and you have to finish a long rest before you can use it again. So, Fel, you do go take a few steps back, uh, letting go of Lilith, and as an action, you surge yourself, uh, healing twenty-four hit points before shaking your head and preparing for another round of combat. As you, Lilith, now I have a turn, I believe. You are no longer yep. grappled nor stunned, but you are uh, prone. But I am prone, so I'm gonna stand up, which brings my movement speed down to half. Yeah, 22 and a half. 20, 22 and a half, which... If I measure, can't I can get to fell just barely? All right, cool. We're moving towards him again. <laughs> okay, you're no longer prone, and you just walk up to him, Lilith, and I guess it's time for the punches. Yep, but he took the dodge action as a bonus action. Yeah, so you have disadvantage to hit. Disadvantage with the punches. Nineteen <laughs> hits. Poor Fel. Lilith is surprisingly good with disadvantage attacks. Actually, you are. So, uh, Fel, you suffer five points of bludgeoning damage, as even as this, as this, as Lilith breaks your impenetrable defense and tries to stun you. So, go ahead and suffer five points of bludgeoning damage and roll a Constitution saving throw. 13 does not beat uh, Lilith's uh, DC, so you are, once again, stunned. Just barely. Just barely. You had to beat a 14. And that gives me normal rolls, right? Um. Because stun has advantage and he took the de patient defense. Yeah, but I don't know that you can still be... Let me read about stun. Uh, is incapacitated, you can't take actions or reactions. You can't move and can only speak falteringly. I would say that you lose the patient defense so attacks would have advantage. Well then. Because of dodge action, you need to be able to move and act to dodge. Or at least react. Well if then. <laughs> the punches come with advantage. And that means a sneak attack, because one level one rogue. Oh yeah, would you look at that? Dodge. Until the start of your next turn, any attack against you has disadvantage. You gain advantage on deck saves. Benefit is lost if incapacitated, or if your speed drops to zero. So yeah, I was right. Alright, so he's now stunned with a 24 to hit. It will. <laughs> Roll for damage on poor old Fel. With sneak attack. Fels are... That's 11 Grappling points of damage. It's our stunning monk. Yeah. <laughs> so, Fel, you suffer 11 points of damage and you go back down to being very, very, very bad. Looking very rough. 
and possibly not looking at a positive end for this encounter for this party. So Lilith, for your second the uh, bonus action. Bonus action. I'm debating a flurry of blow. I'm only gonna do one punch. Okay. I'm it might it might be enough. Save a key point and only do the one with advantage, which is a crit. Which might be enough. Go ahead and roll damage on that. Uh, uh, that's an eight. Ooh. Fell. You suffer eight points of damage. As Lilith goes in for a kick, but you being stunned are much less able to defend yourself from a kick and it ends up hitting you right in the spleen, which hurts like hell. <coughs> And as always, you are stunned, so you lose your turn. <coughs> Lilith, you're up. Fell well, is completely helpless in front of you, and he is barely holding it. I think, I think we've uh, learned that it comes down to which monk goes first. <laughs> Possibly. To yep. be fair, it seems to be a first come, first serve on the monks, which is good. It means we're very evenly matched and we can do this again later. Welp. I'm gonna punch him. Okay, so Lilith, seeing Helpless Fell very dizzy in front of you, you decide to just punch him, boop him in the nose, roll for an attack with advantage. After after my lovely little speech about, ah, oh, that's a 17, that's not gonna uh, it does not. I'm too busy talking about how we're evenly matched, actually. Yeah, the cockiness gets gets to you, and you're able to somehow miss uh, his snoot. But you decide to go for it again. The next and you, one won't miss. And you do hit. So roll for damage with sneak attack, which should be enough to fell him. It's eleven. It better be enough. <laughs> so, Lilith, tells uh, tell us how you fell fell. Well, let's see, I have a lovely little speech about how we're quite evenly matched and we should do this again some other time to see who gets to go first and how it plays out then. Swing, miss right near him, somehow, even though he's stunned and can't move. And then I rear back, take just a sec, and just hit him square in the center of the chest. Ooh. Just one, just knuckles full contact with sternum, just... Fell. You are completely unable to resist this last strike that just gets you completely off balance. You stumble backwards, losing your your balance completely and falling out of the ring. Which then, as you stumble into the dirt, into the dirt, uh, amongst the feet of many Saint that are there, all of them start cheering and yelling. Uh, and everyone's just start, starts applauding. Lilith. The champion of the monk of the monk bout. Yeah, we we of course make sure Fell isn't uh, entirely just. It was of course non-lethal damage the entire time, but let's make sure Fell doesn't die. And one, I want to help him to his feet as a sign of respect. And you do. Uh, shortly thereafter, all of you are. Everyone is besides Fell and Fell. You feel lots of aches all over your body, but you also do feel uh, weird, weird feelings inside of you, a sense of respect for your party mates and a sense of also... <laughs> or is that quivering palm? <laughs> you do feel a sense of, of like... There's no way to do a non-lethal quivering palm right yeah. now. Uh, I know. You feel uh, this, this, this sense of proud pride of having these loyal party mates around you who will Pick him up, have your back. Him. Tell him. Dust, dust him you all. did quite well, mister. I was going to be the one to pick him up. Yeah, but I gotta go. All of you. We gotta do the, we gotta do the combatants respect thing, you know? And it's good that there's more than one person popping in with their fists. Did really well, Lilith. So did you. We'll, we will have to try this again to see if you get to go first. 
<laughs> Next time I won't make the mistake of letting you go. Well, only fair. <laughs> I let you up so it wasn't just a slaughter. You let me up. So it wasn't a slaughter either. Yep. <laughs> but it was fun. I had fun. It Poor was fell. an impressive match, you two. Yep. Long fights are fairly quick because we have hardly any energy. Yeah, yeah, we have low health. <laughs> Fell did 20 points of damage to me. And <laughs> I don't have the healing he does. Oh, thank, thank Doug, you guys don't have a whole lot of health. Otherwise, we would be here for ages. No, nah, we had a nice little quick fight. Yeah. No, no but imagine like... Yeah, was only Im two people, so... Imagine two barbarians Absolutely. going at one another. Yeah, yeah, we'd be here forever. Yeah. Barbarians with deep All right. <laughs> resistance. Uh, so, at the end of the of the spa, everyone helps each other up, and they do treat or treat you all to sort of like a, a a small feast. It's not it's not anything opulent by any means, but it's good enough to satiate everyone's hunger if you are hungry. Uh, and they are very good hosts, keeping you there and training you as well as they can uh, while you are there. As everyone is invited to stay a while and rest. So, I believe everyone will be performing a long rest now, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you do. All of you benefit now from a long rest. Everyone recovers full HP and every other benefit that comes from a long rest. Doug, yes. can I perhaps roll on one of my trinkets that I've been carving on for a long time? Yes, you can. You can even on two. Ooh, two would be good. Can I roll an intelligence check on the book? Uh... Not necessarily an intelligence, but I will let you... Uh, what are you trying to do with the book? I'm just, uh, the book I'm writing and making it legible. Okay, kind of trying to translate it. Yeah. Okay. And just let me make some quick maps because I'm bad at this. Okay. No, Graf. So, Graf, you go ahead and... <clears throat> You go ahead and go through the, go through your tools and try to to, to work on it and start word carving uh, one of the trinkets that you're trying to do. Uh, I, I don't know which one you're doing. It's Draken's Wolf and I rolled one. Okay, there you go. Uh, you, it's not that you, it's not that you ruin the piece, but more so that you cannot concentrate on it because being guests here, uh, all the same things are very on top of you at every single moment. And you cannot really find the peace and respite that you need to focus on working on this word carving. And as best as you try to focus, you always feel like someone's just above your shoulder watching what you're doing. And it's really distracting, really. So you decide to maybe leave it for another time instead of doing a poor job here and ruining the, the, the piece of wood that you have. Yes, indeed. So, all of you go ahead and benefit from a long rest. Draken, I would like you to go ahead and... Uh, are you reading the book on your own or are you having Lilith with you helping with history facts? No, this is the bestiary. Oh, the bestiary. You're writing down... I'm translating it so it's not illegible. Okay. So go ahead and make another intelligence check uh, for your book. Let me find where I noted that before. There we go. 14. All right. <clears throat> Draken. Takes you... Quite a long portion here of this of this moment that you have. Uh, the low light really doesn't help, but you are able to transcribe a lot more of pages of this.
best cherry here and little by little you are seeing a lot of progress coming up there's you're, you're still the translating a lots of bits of creatures that you have not yet encountered and you probably don't think that you will uh, you creatures that you know like uh, hippogriffs and griffins on their own uh, creatures that you do know that exist uh, actually I think you have faced griffins before haven't you no you haven't what? never mind I'm thinking of something else uh, you do write about this, these creatures that you know very well, but you have never faced uh, in this adventure. But yeah, you transcribe as much as you can, going by alphabetic order, trying to keep order to the madness. And yep. soon enough, you have trans transcribed many, many, many pages. Hmm. Uh, how much would you say I have done? I'm just keeping track of my end. Uh, I would say at this point, considering all of your roles, you would be at, at about uh, forty something percent. Okay. You really did take quite some value. Yep, that's about twenty more percent. Um. Uh, at this time, all of you benef benefit from a long rest. You do wake up. All the same things are are waiting for you quote-unquote waiting for you with more food and other supplies and now uh, they all prepare you for your journey back uh, talking about the dangers of the cavern but mostly just letting you guys know that hey if you took down all the creatures it should be okay you seem like capable warriors and you should be able to uh, do this no problem um, Matthias and Fel the two of yep. you have an have a sense, a very good notion that now is about two and a half in the in the afternoon. Regardless, everyone yep. is ready to go. Hey ho, hey ho, hey ho, hey ho, hey ho. Are, are the Redwood Sanfordine sending anybody with us to take to the Dwarf Sanfordine or the Reach Forest Sanfordine or the Peak Forest Sanfordine? Yes, they are. You better believe they are. So they do send three more Sanfordines with you that they uh, little by little introduce. They send Katen, a uh, Sanfordine that is, that is going to join the expedition and try to... Uh, uh, she, she is carrying a backpack with a lot of supplies. From what you have been explained, she is trying to get to the Dwarf Sanfordines and share what they have with one another. Uh, they are also sending names, okay. Uh, Kated, let me put it in the chat. Uh, you, you know Grath is our, our, our lore person and has to write all this down in, in the thing. Yes, I know, poor Grath, he has to write it all down and I'm making it so, so hard for him. So they are. He's best known. He is. Uh, they are sending Kate to to Dorf. They are sending Andreas to the Peak Forest. And they are sending also Princess to the Redwoods. Actually, no, never mind. To the yeah, Reach for to the Reach Forest. Sorry, I misspoke. All of them are carrying a, a backpack with supplies and little notes and other such other things to uh, really help share what information they have. Not only re re relying on like oral histories and whatnot, but also written accounts. So you have Andres and Francis. There you go. Praise. I don't know and, and, why, but I, I, when I see those names, I think of. And then. And uh, uh, Andreas is going to which forest? 
Andreas is going through Peak Forest, and Francis is going through the Reach, Reach. Forest. Yep, got it. The got it. furthest one. And they all look wow. very ready to go. However, um, it is your outlanders in the party, they do know that it's uh, two and a half. And it might be a little bit too early to go, but everyone looks very impatient and really rearing to go. So there's no reason not to go. Other than that, the safe dance are going to be a little while in the sun. Let's say light, Summer Lad. Wrath says he gives him the dark visions. Okay. Was, uh, by I was going to ask for him to save the spells, Lord. <laughs> um, at this point, uh, all of your spells have faded, so you have to recast them again. These spells, such as Dark Vision and such other. Uh, what will you do, Bing Squad? Take them out, ruin. Okay. So everyone now, they you start saying your goodbyes and. The hell is his name? Morich uh, salutes you and, and wishes you uh, Godspeed as you go into your own journey back to the surface, taking away some some Symphodines with you as well. Uh, these Symphodines, these. Where we're going at? They do seem a little bit more uh, combat capable Symphodines than Stubhard and his crew. By the way, speaking of Stubhard, uh, Hillsdim is staying behind. He's gonna stay here with the uh, with the Redwood Symphodines to exchange knowledge. Alright, so we picked up three, dropped off Hillsdim. We're going to be giving Cadith to the Dorf, Dorf Symphodine. Then we're going to the peak forest. Yes, you are. So, being squad, you start making your way out of the dungeons again, of the ruins rather. Uh, through the same way you came, some of the same things they guide you to the outskirts of their village, uh, back into the cavernous tunnels that you have followed your way here, making your way upstairs. Little by little, very slowly, you go climbing and inching, inching until you do finally go back to the uh, uh, what, what was it called again? Yes, one hour later, you are back in the room with the trap that you have found previously. Uh, the door with the with, with the coins riddle, and you are back there as it happens. Is it open? Uh, yes, it, the door is still open as ever since you went through it, you didn't. Nobody told me that they were gonna close the door. The door has remained open. There aren't any more monsters in the rooms, are there? Uh, well, funny that you asked. Of course. <laughs> That's why I asked. I didn't want to be totally surprised. Uh, as, as perception check? No, as uh, all uh, of uh, you uh. are climbing back into the dungeon and moving into the next room, uh, the room where the same are going to, if you were, if you would care to accompany them. So the next room, not the room that we have a big tentacle monster, or the but the room after it. Yes. This room with more. There's something over by the door. I can see it. So as all of you reach the next room, uh, from the corner of your eyes, most of you see something scuddling uh, through the uh, left corridor, back into the shadows. Uh, I'm going to... It had multiple legs. I think I saw more than four. I'm going to do stealth, but before that, I'm casting Pass Without a Trace. Same. Help. 
I I am not stealth. Well, that's what the pass without a trace is for. Yep. So all creatures within thirty feet of me. Okay. Me and my companions. So this actually can count for the I choose. So this can count for the Sifa nine too. Yeah, everyone, pretty much. And I'm going to you roll for stealth. Okay. So thirty-two. Matthias goes ahead 22. and casts uh, pass without a <clears throat> trace on everyone, and everyone now sticks to the shadows, trying to stealth as best as they can. Uh, I will make one roll for the same thing because I don't feel like rolling individually. Oh boy, they roll so bad. Uh, all right. So very bad. The same thing is the same thing is to stay back, because they don't want you getting the way of combat. And yeah, let's let's keep them safe. And no I'll... more fireballs to the Symphodine, please. Yes, and uh, that's Drake out of can... our hands. <laughs> Drake can go ahead and roll for the uh, your I owl as well, and die here for what? For your owl. Oh no, he's just there. Uh, he needs to stealth as well, I believe. I would dismiss him if there's combat. Okay. If you believe there is combat, you will just dismiss him. Yeah. Okay. So your owl goes poof. Yep. Pretty much. So the lowest stealth we have is 18 with summer lead, I believe. Yes. <clears throat> yep. 18 with Summer Lead, actually 15 with the same things, but they are staying back. So all of you are, as best as you can tell, very stealthed as you decide to go into the next room, I believe. So what is the marching order? I'm one of the ones in the front. I'll be, I'm close. I'll be close to the front. I will be I'll next to the Matthias. The door is two people wide, so... Yeah. Just swarm around Matthias. Does what? Does what? Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> Behind Lilith. Grath's already there. Yeah. Uh, nope, not Grath, behind Flynn. So... Who is besides Matthias? Or is Matthias going alone in the front? I'll go up with the front then if nobody's going to. Okay. Fell, what about you? Um. What's going on? We're getting a marching order for combat. Possible combat. So, for the marching yeah, order, we I'm have. It's okay. Uh, for the marching order, we have Lilith and Matthias in the front, Summerled and Drake in the middle, Fel and Flint in the back middle, and Graf and Hentai bringing up the rear. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, seems well enough. So... Uh, as all of you start moving forward, thankful now that you all had a good long rest, and you leave the same things behind for for a short while as you uh, inch further uh, ahead. Da -ba -da -ba -da. Yep. Da -ba -da -ba. So we're gonna be moving up through that corridor. Yes. Uh, and I see it again. Just a second now. As you are moving forward in the corridor. Uh, yeah. All of you guys are very well stuffed. Unfortunately, let me see if these creatures can see you. And of no, course I can, can see it, I don't like it. I can see it and I don't like it. Of course they I can don't see it. <laughs> I can't see anything. Yes, well, you Nothing yet. But that's because Loth's on the left side. Da -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I don't I... like it. I hate I it. The door frame and lock it up. Ooh. Ooh. I don't like that noise, dog. I don't like ooh. <laughs> ooh. Something good. Ooh. -oh. Oh whoa! No. I I rolled the I rolled the good here for them. So as all of you go through the door, 
Most of you go through the door, uh, arriving there. You just see now that this room, which previously was devoid of anything, is now completely filled with spoilers. And How the I... fuck did they get in? And as all of these spiders are running across the ceiling and the walls yeah, and the floor, just walking around, uh, one of these spiders, it, 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 it is not just a spider, it is a spider lower half, with the upper half is the body of a woman. And you see two more of these uh, coming up and they just say, well... Sisters, I think we have found our lunch, our dinner, and possibly our breakfast for tomorrow. Yummy, yummy. Oh, God. And I would Are like all... everyone to roll I'm for initiative. To this <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Come on, oh. good initiative roll. 15, I can... Oh, darn it. I didn't click my character. Darn let me let me do um, let me fix that for you. There it go. is a fifteen. I got twenty. I got a twenty. My dog, oh. stop rolling so high, 22. everyone. No. <laughs> stop it. Doug, there's three spiders. Uh, Z. Five regular wait, 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 spiders. Wait, wait. Yeah. See, I thought he was gonna go someplace else. I didn't know he was gonna be at his computer. He didn't. Yeah. So he rolled there. an eighteen. <laughs> I'll be at the computer for the next fifteen minutes. Could have mentioned that. <laughs> never ask. Communication error. And the monk is ready to go. Okay. I rolled a Hell 17, yeah. but I I go be after Graf. Dracon goes before Lilith. If you guys have the same uh, initiative, you can decide which order you want to take. The... No, it's dex based mostly. I have. I have, I have. It's yes, dex, it is. Has more. It is, but if you, but since you guys are in the same team, you can choose who wants to go first. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, typically, we only use the dexterity if it's uh, between an enemy and an ally. If it's between two allies, you technically can choose whoever goes first whenever your turns roll around. Yes. Anyway. Uh, then... Then they go first. Mind, can I go first? I want to set something up, Graf. Sure, that's fine. They do go first, though. Uh, they have a higher dex than than Fel. Actually, I don't know. Let me check. What did the check you? Uh, Fel, how much is your dex again? Eighteen. Oh fuck! They, you go first then. Sure. Fel is a speedy little boy. So Fel, you are up first, you are in the door, watching a room full of spiders, big ass spiders and spider women. What do you want to do? I believe you're back in the computer where you can access uh, your uh, shenanigans. I hope. He's gonna punch a spider. Did you have back your cloak and bracers? Okay. <clears throat> that is I a good did. point. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I put on armor after the fight was done. Alright. Okay. Uh, your AC is this the same though? Oh, is it not? It's 18. Was it supposed to be higher? Yeah, he should have like plus three from his magical equipment. What? Did you make sure to put your cloak back on? Yeah, you gotta. If you use the equip feature in um, the item thing, you gotta make sure it's recollect. Re otherwise, it'll show up as light gray. What is that? Is that right? This fell has twenty one yeah. AC. Is that better? Yep. Yeah. Protection and the braces of defense. How in the how in, how how am I ever gonna hit you, Phil? That's the point, <laughs> Doug. That's the point. No, that's not the point. I wanna hit you. Tag damn you, Phil. Tag damn you. Okay. Uh, sure. All right. You go ahead and punch this spider. 
Uh, is that what you're doing? I think he was using the claw first. I was using the a dagger. punch. Sorry, my, I'm on a phone. It's hard. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, he is doing the punch first. With a twenty-four, you hit. You definitely hit. So go ahead and roll for damage on that, Spidey. Seven points of bludgeoning damage. All right. What else are you doing, Phil? I'll give you a. F yep. <laughs> I was gonna say I'll give bet you five bucks, Doug. Okay, you won five bucks. Uh, stunning strike. He's trying to beat it. It is trying to beat a fifteen. It does not beat a fifteen. It gets stunned. Uh, stunned. There you go. Second attack fell. What are you doing? Fell. And sorry, and we're gonna try and grapple the uh, angry spider woman. Okay. Interesting movement, I would say. Uh, go ahead and roll your grappling check as the spider woman is uh, try and uh, contest it. By the way, only half of you understood what the spider woman said because it said so in undercommon. Lilith doesn't understand anymore. Tongues only last an hour. There you go. So. Uh, yeah, critical roll. So no, the spider woman is not grappled. Can I still flurry and blows it? Actually, no. I'm gonna take patient defense. Okay, so you go with a key point and patient defense your way. Yep. Around the situation, and that's it for fell. Next turn, uh, nobody has legendary action, so good for you. This giant spider over there is gonna go ahead and attack Fell probably. Because he can. Disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And this spider here is gonna move over there. Here actually. And is gonna go ahead and attack. Eh, sure, why not, Lilith? It's gonna throw webs at you, Lilith. And that's gonna be a uh, eleven to hit. Well, that's not gonna work. Yeah, I didn't. We're gonna have to reschedule that. Come again? I said we're gonna have to reschedule the web. <laughs> And she doesn't recharge it. Good. Feck it. Okay, that's it for the giant spider. So Lilith, you're up. Huzzah. I'm gonna eat some cookies okay. because... We options. Let's not leave Fell alone with the giant spider woman. So I'm gonna go right there. Oh god, there's another one over in that corner. <laughs> and I uh, wanna know how many there are, because I already see three. There's quite a few. I uh, see a lot. There's three large spider women and I count six large spiders. See I see five large spiders, but you're in the room so you can see more than I can. There's there's one way off in the corner that I didn't see before. Anyway, I'm punching the spider woman. Alright. Um, row for a dex. That's a 12. Miss. Second attack. Is a. F four. Miss. God damn it. <laughs> Flurry of blows then. Miss. <laughs> 25. Okay, that hits. With sneak attack, because there's fell next to it. 
Okay. Oh, shit. I rolled an attack instead. Whoops, that's my... Nope, ignore that. I clicked the wrong button. Uh, 13 that's points of damage. Thir 13 points. And can I use another key point to attempt to stun? Sure. Because monks. <laughs> so it's trying to be the 14, and it yep. does not. It fails horrifically. <laughs> not that bad. Has anyone, has anyone taken damage? Nope. Not yet. Only the bad guys. <laughs> and that means my next second attack from Flurry of Blows, because I only did one, gets advantage. Yes. So we'll roll with advantage. That's a 26. That does hit. Flint, if you say draw from the deck, I'm going to smack you. And that's six points of bludgeoning damage, and that is the end of my turn. Who sure as heck is? Uh, Draken, you're up. I can move up to this one and cast Shadow Blade. Okay. <clears throat> And then I'm gonna slash it out with advantage. Alright, uh, you do because it's a stun. By the way, can you cast an attack on the same turn? Yeah, it's a bonus action. Okay. Spell. You hit with a 15, go ahead and roll for damage. Eighteen points of damage. Anything else? That's my turn. Alright. And you're now concentrating on Shadow Blade, right? Yep. Okay, Flint. Okay, so like I said, I have a stupid idea. I'm gonna see if it works. You're gonna punch, aren't you? Move right up to the stunned spider lady here. And then... Punch. I see here my robe of useful items. I have a pit patch. Uh, pit patch 10 feet cube on a side, which you can place on the ground within 10 feet of you. I would like to drop the stunned uh, spider lady into a pit. <sighs> That's the best noise. <laughs> so capturing that. Exasperated DM size of that. It's going, to, it's going to be my ringtone next week. <laughs> well. Oh my gosh, sorry. If this is spider. DM gives <laughs> party useful item. If party this is... actually uses item. DM tries Pikachu. Uh, if this spider could speak more than only falteringly, it would say motherfucker, but he can't. <laughs> so he falls, uh, if I'm not mistaken and the math is correct, uh, there is terminal velocity and how much you can fall in 6 seconds, and if I'm not mistaken that is 600 feet, and yeah, he falls <laughs> forever. <laughs> 600 feet, I guess. Well, how, 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 how deep, how is, deep the, is, is the pit? I'm looking at the thing. It says pit, a cube 10 feet wide on the side, which you can place on the ground within 10 feet of you. I mean, I'm guessing by the wording it's a 10 by 10 by 10 pit. I mean, if Doug wants to make it a bottomless pit, then... Hmm. Let me check the book. Specifically says cube. It does, but I do have a part two in my plan. Um, Flint, this is the best dumb idea I've ever heard. Yeah, it's not even done yet. Uh, ten feet. So yeah, it falls ten feet. It suffers one d six damage because it cannot arrest its fall, despite being a spider. So it takes two points of damage and sinks into the ground. And since I can only do one patch per turn, Flint is already reaching in to grab another patch off of his rope. Okay. Mm 
Are you doing anything else? I'm slightly. I'm slightly. Mm, yeah, I'm not gonna do anything else just yet. Um. Wait. You know what? Just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna blow my action surge so I can pull the second pad. <laughs> Uh, iron door patch up to 10 feet wide and 10 feet high barred on one side of your choice which you can place in an opening you can reach it conforms to fit the opening attaching and hinging itself so I'm going to put an iron door on top of this pit and bar it from our side <laughs> I mean I mean <laughs> What? <laughs> I mean, sure, fuck it. <laughs> you conjure up a door. It's my, it's Tiger's laugh that is making me laugh. I'm sorry, it's just hilarious. It's this. I think it's the best turn ever. So Flint, you will straight up go and. <laughs> he just Flint's straight up go to jail. <laughs> the spider lady. <laughs> you straight up conjure a uh, trapdoor in the floor. And there you are. It's not iron, it's but not it's, iron. it's the best I have. Do not touch this door. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. So yeah, there is a. You conjure up a trapdoor in the floor. And I don't know, maybe next turn we will see what will come out of that plan. So, what are you doing for your bonus action, Flint? I don't really have a bonus action to use, so I'm just gonna, like, clap my hands, dust my, cl uh, dust my hands off cartoon character style since I was a cartoon character this whole turn and end my. I mean. I mean, Acme would be proud. So that's so that. Flint's turn. Next up is Hentai. Fireball here. Mm. Oh, sure. you want to fireball deeper into the room. I suggest you move into the room and then fireball over here. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, fireball right there. This should have gone differently. If only I had rolled better initiative. So, pretty much you're hitting everyone with your fireball. There's no way you're not hitting everyone. So, Hentai, at what level are you casting your fireball? Level 4, already casted 28 fire. Sure. 32, actually. Yeah, 32. Oh, yeah, that's right, 32. <clears throat> because the uh, spell, whatchamacallit, the intelligence or whatever. So they are all trying to beat a 16. That's a fail. That's a fail. These two take 32 points of damage. Fire damage. 40. Spider women, but it is moose spoilers. They all have to make a deck save. That's four. One fail, 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 fail. Everyone takes full damage. <laughs> they screech, they screech in pain as they burn alive and. The room is Wait, moment. Where, where was the fireball centered? Uh, in the big Spider Woman number three, further into the so, room. So, did you get the other spider? The one further down into the room. Further yes. Down. So one, two, three, four. Five. Oh, okay. I didn't see the first half of the deck saves. Okay. It's all right. Um, it's... Oh, and I I also uh, inspire breath, and I also say spiders are one of my favorite food. <laughs> oh no! I don't like the sound of that. And that is it for your turn, hentai. 
Next up is initiative uh, placement 17. Graf, what's your dexterity again? 18. Summer lead. Uh, my dexterity is 8. Okay. But, but so, I've agreed with Summer lead that he will go ahead of me. Okay, but there is a spider that's going to go first. Then I will go first. Okay. So Graf, then the giant spider, then summer lead. So Graf, what are you doing? I'm going to move five, ten. Oh my word, fifteen, twenty-five, thirty, up to this spider number one, and I am going to attack two times with my silver short sword. Okay, <clears throat> roll for an attack. 16 hits. <coughs> Roll for damage on that. Uh, you get to add your sneak if you want, because you're besides fell. Oh, okay. So that's a 9. And Plus 4. Minus 4. Okay, second attack. My second attack, which I'm going to add my Colossus Slayer to, since I have done damage. You have. Uh, 18 hits, go ahead and roll for damage. 11. 11. Alright. The spider is looking rough. Excellent. I am done. Okay. Next up is a giant spider. Who... Does Wait, not... Graf, don't you have a bonus action still? No, because I used the my used my second attack as my bonus action. Aren't you a level five ranger with dual attack? Oh yes, yeah. yes. I'm sorry about that. I do get one more attack. There you go. <clears throat> he keeps forgetting that he leveled up and now he has his extra attack now. Yeah, I do, but thirteen I don't think hits. No, he doesn't. Unfortunately. So, yeah, it doesn't hit. And that's your turn, Graf. Next up is Giant Spider. It dislikes very much being set on fire, so it's gonna go ahead and. Uh, actually, it's, from where it is, it's gonna go ahead and throw web at you, Flint. <coughs> Of course it's going to throw it at me. I just dropped one of its things into a pit, and yeah, that just hits right above my AC. Yay, so you are restrained. Well, Flint, you just see this, this spider on the other side of the room shoot webs at you, and you are restrained. And it does not recharge, is it? Bad. <laughs> So you are <clears throat> concurrently stuck to web and you cannot move. And attacks against you have advantage, you have disadvantage on attacks. So, so. So that's it for the spider stun, except that it's also gonna move this away. Summerled, you're up. Uh, question to you all, to everyone. Should I set up my healing or should I attack? Whatever you want to do. It's because sure. I don't. Uh, I don't it's... think we've taken much damage. Uh, nobody no, has no, taken I'm... damage so far, and it's up to you, really, Sam. You guys can press the attack and kill these creatures faster, or you can focus on healing and take longer to finish them off. I say wreck some shit. All right, then I'm gonna try something. <laughs> I, I wanna try this. Okay. Um, I'm going to move. Here, to this thing. Okay. And... I will use a... Level... Inflict wounds... With the blood. Uh, what level again? Level 3. Oh shit, okay. Oh, shit. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> so somehow they produced one of the vials of blood, uh, of the Deathlock blood, on top of the um, of conjuring your inflict wounds and as you focus a lot of negative energy on your hand, you touch this spider and go ahead and roll for damage. On your level three inflict wounds plus two d eight. Oh, it's it's hit. So go ahead and uh, roll damage on your spell, level 3. Okay, this is going to be fun. And add 2d8. Yes. <laughs> so, oh boy, that's 29 plus 2d8. I think you have to roll that manually. 29 plus 8, that's 37. Points of damage. <clears throat> Summer lad, you focus your negative energy on this spider and just withers in front of you very fast and with a very sickly noise as it becomes a very crumpled ball of almost nothing on the floor. And congratulations, you defeated the one spider. Wow. Yes. And lucky for you is the spider that was gonna go next in the initiative order. I actually saw that. <clears throat> oh, damn you. So, uh, what else you're doing, Summerlad? I don't have nothing else to do, but I'm happy with this. Okay, so next up is you, Matthias. Okay, so we've got Stun Spider, Spider, and Spider. Yes. And trap the spider. Don't forget about the trapped spider inside the door. Trapped yes. spider lady. Is that door locked, by the way? It, it, I just yes. push it, open? Yeah. it is it's barred. It's barred from our side, so it would take probably a lot of strength to break that thing open. Alright, All right, so cool. I'm going to move right up here next to Grath and Dracon. Okay. And I'm using Hunter's Mark on the spider that's stunned. Sure. It is Hunter's Mark. And I am going to, since it's a bonus action, I'm going to wail on it with my uh, longsword now. Okay. Uh, roll for Ruling attack. style, Colossus <laughs> Slayer, Hunter's Mark. Oh yeah, all that fun stuff when it hits. Sneak attack and can you dodge? Have advantage. Uh, Nineteen is, hits. Uh, you have advantage. Yes, you have advantage. True. That is true. Let's see what I get. Twenty-one, 21. hits. So we'll roll for damage. Closer and closer to the crit. <laughs> all right. Just a little and... bit more. So, 15 points of damage. Yep. And then Hunter's Mark. Yes. Ignore this stuff up top. I forgot to turn it off. So, 5. Okay. So, 20. <clears throat> 20! Uh, with a single strike, it is enough to fell this spider completely. Cool. Then, I'm going to... Oh, I... I don't have a bonus action anymore, so I can't. You have your second spot. Yet. You, yeah, you have your second attack only. But I can attack the other second spider here that's next to Grath. Sure, you can. So I'm going to take another swing. Okay. <clears throat> Roll for an attack. No advantage this time around. This is just, just a simple attack, but it hits. 18. Roll for damage. Uh, you can have. Plus a slayer. Can you do Colossal Slayer twice a turn? <clears throat> no, just once. Okay. It even says so. Your tenacity, whereas you can, when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, the creature takes a 1d8. If it's below, you can deal this extra damage only once per turn. Yeah, so. Only damage. And dueling style. With my dueling style. Oh boy. Wow, that was really good. So that's 14. 14 uh, points of damage. 
Yeah, because I almost rolled max damage on that. Mm. And this spider is also looking very rough right now. And Excellent. I, be I believe that that's that for your turn. I did a bonus action, an action, and yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, there's a spider that is stunned. It's not doing anything. Next up is a giant spoiler. It's going to go ahead, crawling up on the floor, moving around. Ten feet up in the air. It's going to go ahead and spit some webs on... Lilith. Uh, it shoots webs on you, I don't think it hits. No, that's a mess. Okay, that's it for you, that, that spider's this turn. Next up is the spider woman. She is going to go ahead and... Move right over here. Over on top of you, Summer Lead, and is gonna go and attack you. A few many times. Because that damn you withering its 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 many underlings. I'm going to kill this thing. So what's it gonna do is Oh Duck Damn it, they can't do that. Shit. Yeah. It's gonna go ahead and strike you with its uh Long sword that it is carrying. Sure. So it's gonna go and ahead and attack you three times, Summerlad. First is gonna be a seven, it misses. It's actually a critical miss. Uh, second is gonna be a 25 to hit. And third is hits. gonna be. It's gonna be a nine. So only one of them hits. So Summer Lad, you suffer uh, four points of slashing damage. Look at that, rolling a natural one on that damage. Okay. So Summer Lad, in three attacks you suffer four points of slashing damage. And that's it for that creature's this turn. So, four points of slashing damage and what? Just that. That's it. Dead, dead monster that doesn't need to roll terribly. Yep. As always. I am lucky. I think it's the only reason we've lived through some of these encounters is because Doug has rolled terribly. <laughs> Possibly. It is. I, I, I'm rolling so bad, you guys have no idea. Uh, this next spider is gonna go over here. And well, this time we do know. For the third time, try and spit web on Lilith. You guys are really determined to do this, huh? And he misses. <laughs> Actually, I have to roll to see if they recharge. That wow. doesn't. That doesn't. Wow. Nobody can web Lilith. Nobody can web back leader. God damn it. <clears throat> Nobody can keep her down. Man, Spider-Man makes, makes webbing seem so easy. So next up is the other spider creature. It's gonna go right over here. Here. And it's gonna go and attack you, Flint. Of course. Uh, can I bend it so... Can I bend myself so the attack will hit the web instead? No, you cannot. You have disadvantage uh, when being yeah. attacked. So, it has advantage to attack you, as it happens. Ba -da -ba -da, ba -ba 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 -ba. So, then I go ahead and attack you three times, Flint. Twice with advantage or with a long sword strike. So, that's a... Oh, oh shit. Just my luck, look at this. 11 to hit, misses. Uh, 19 to hit, misses. Uh, 19 is actually my armor class, so that'll definitely hit. Dang, dog. So you suffer, Flint, 4 points of flashing damage from one attack. On top of that, it's gonna go ahead and bite you. 
So that's a 20 to hit, which hits. So, Flint, you suffer a total of 12 points of damage. Now, I see that poison thing there. Do we have to roll anything to not be poisoned? Nope. You are. You are. Immediately so I'm just you... getting some straight venom damage. All right. Yeah. You take immediate, immediate damage. So that's it for that spider's turn. Not a very smart turn, but now I just want to wreck you. As fast as you can. Uh, that spider is dead, and next up is Fell again. Ryan, what are you doing? Is it possible I can help Flint get out of the spider web, or would that, that uh, would take my turn, right, for a help action? Yeah, it would be an action to help uh, Flint out of the webs. You can but if you I want. See... I see that it says it has an AC and an HP, so could he attack it with a dagger uh, as part of the attack action and then rotate and attack another spider? Uh, yes, you can. Alright, so uh, let's do that then. Thank you for bringing that up. Although Flint cannot attack it, he actually he can, but he has disadvantage on attacking it. So, so uh, yeah, reaching down with my jaw would be really hard to do. But Fell should have a dagger on his person. Derek, you can also punch it because you're like just tearing it away with your hands. But our punches do bludgeoning. It specifically says it's immune to that. Oh yeah. Never mind. I didn't. I did not read the full thing. So. Fell, you produce your bullet claw dagger and strike at not quite Flint, but Flint nonetheless, and hit the web. Go ahead and roll for damage. 11, alright. You are able to, in a, in, a, in a very nice arc, cut the webs completely and free Flint from his, 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 his bindings. <laughs> So, Phil, for your second attack, what are you doing? We're going to uh, go around to the spider that's attacking Summerled, and I know I'm going to provoke some uh, attack of opportunity as I do. You might. So, where are you going? To... <clears throat> Over there? Okay. So, you're going to go and take two opportunity attacks, two bites. So that's a 24 to hit, and that's a 17 to hit. Only the 24 hit. Okay, you suffer... Uh, 8 plus 5, that's a tw 13 points of poison damage. What's this about a DC? Uh, theoretically, if you make the DC, you take half damage. Uh, but I'm not using that because, as it is, I'm already not being able to do. Uh, We're not... murdering. It's there. I'll fast. take it. I'm not. E I'm not even being able to do damage to you guys as it is. We're dealing too much damage. <laughs> Pretty much. But uh, so, if, 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 the, if the poison damage reduces you to half health, then it's a different whole thing. But anyway, uh, what are you doing? doing? I'm going to strike the uh, spider lady. Actually, I'm going to try and grapple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're trying to grapple the spider woman. So go ahead and roll for a grapple attack. Uh, actually, a grapp uh, grapple check. Ah. That's a natural 20. That's not a natural 20, so it's grappled. So second attack, a grapple a spider woman. Flurry of load. Sure. Uh, go ahead and roll for your two attacks. 
one fell monk special. Advantage. We have advantage. <laughs> uh, 21 hits and 26 also hits. So go ahead and deal damage twice. Should the speed ruin. That's 15 total. Alright. Um, prone, I have to make a deck save intro, DC 15, it makes it, it's not prone. And that's your turn, I believe, Phil. That's my turn. Okay, the next up is the other giant spider. It is going to go and attack Graf. So Graf, you are attacked by a giant spider. That's a I'm 18. 17 to hit. It misses you. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Lilith. Uh, I'm gonna punch the spider that Fel has grappled. All right. With the punches. Eighteen. Uh, misses. Eighteen misses. Misses. Ah, uh, god damn it! All right, punch number two. Seventeen. Misses as well. I hate these things. <laughs> Flurry of blows. Two more punches. Okay. 24. Hits. Finally, I get sneak attack. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> sneak attack, and I, 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 I'm I, foreseeing a stunning strike coming its way. Well, it depends. I just dealed 15 damage. How's it look? Very good. Looks very good. Yeah, very, very, very good. I don't like it looking very good, stunning strike. <laughs> Okay, uh, Flurry of Blows is to have your second attack. Yeah, oh yeah, but you're, you're... if it's stunned, I get advantage. Yeah, so you're, gonna, you're gonna... Yet. Sorry. Um... No, would you look at that? It is not stunned. Alright, attack number two. Not this time around. 24 again. Hits again. And I would like to prone it. That's another 10 to damage. 10 points of damage, it resists the prone, not, and it is prone. There you go. Look at that, I have helped fell prone and grapple. Okay, that is my turn, because I don't want to use another key point to try to stun it again, I'm running low. Okay, Draken. Shadow Blade advantage. Okay, roll for uh, your attack. Uh, 17 misses. Try and stab with the offhand dagger. Okay, roll for your attack. Still have adva advantage. Uh, 26 hits, go ahead and roll for damage, you have sneak attack. Uh, 15 more points of damage, attack them. It starts to look rough. I dealt 25 to it. <laughs> uh, it should be 16, I don't have the plus one oriented into it yet. Uh, 16 you said? Yeah. Okay, minus one. It looks slightly more rough. And that's your turn, right? Yep. Okay, Flint, you're no longer restricted. What are you doing? Alright, I see this spider lady looking quite rough right next to me. Uh, prone and all that. However, all of my melee attacks are... Uh, Crap. 
So I'm gonna leave the spider lady to you people. I'm gonna turn around and shoot at the spiders that are over at the wall over there. Um, I'm going to use my two-handed shot with sharpshooter, and if it hits a violent shot. <clears throat> I believe you have a disadvantage on your attack. Because on that guy over there. You are next to a creature with melee range that is threatening you. But I'm not shooting at it, I'm shooting at the one across the way. Um if I am not mistaken, you you would have a disadvantage, but I don't know for sure, so sure you don't. Uh, go ahead and make your normal attack. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to be using Sharpshooter, uh, two-handed hand cannon. Okay. And yeah, according to the book, if you are within five feet of a hostile creature who can't see you and is not incapacitated, you would have a disadvantage on ranged attacks. But, never mind. Well, in that case, can I move five feet to the left and then shoot? And, add, don't bother. It's not like you're gonna... This is not gonna make or break the combat, so go ahead. Alright, well, I rolled a natural 20 with uh, the sharpshooter there, and you can see the minus five I added to it. So, okay. That's weird. So, um, it hits. Go ahead and destroy that spider. Yeah, because I said I was doing the violent shot, which is adding uh, additional hit die. So I'm essentially using 4d10 for this attack, plus 10. Um, yes. I believe this is what they call overkill. <laughs> so that's the initial damage. Alright, that is uh, 17 plus. I mean, I mean it was already... already. This one has a plus 4 attached to it because it's just the uh, violent shot damage I wrote in, so you can take 4 off of this one. Um, that's the damage. That's the damage. Yeah, so that'll be eight for the violent shot, and then plus ten altogether for the uh, sharpshooter. So seventeen plus eight is uh, twenty-five. So thirty-five points of damage. The, the spider is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even use a grit point because I rolled a crit and I killed it. So. Because so, we keep rolling all of those monsters, you know we're most likely going to fight another behemoth or beholder, right? Yep. And I already don't like it. Wait, was was Flint shooting this one or this one? I don't know. I which don't one? know which one. My intention was to shoot the one that tried to bite Graf. Oh, sorry. So the one is either still by the door, not dead. The one that tried to bite Graf is dead, however. Boom. Incredibly dead. Oh. <gasps> I have no idea. Yeah, and uh, since I can only do one shot with my hand cannon, I guess I'll turn around and try and punch this drider into the ground. Sure. It's already in, in the ground, but... Go ahead. You have an advantage because it's prone. Oh no. Oh, I forgot to turn off sharpshooter, but that's a 21 to hit. Alright, so 21 does hit. Uh, this time around, go ahead and roll for damage. Second time it hits. <laughs> the whole campaign. Yep. It's now what, 2 for 5? Two for ten. Uh, 
13 bludgeoning. Okay. Yeah, 13 bludgeoning, and uh, I don't think I can push it 10 feet into the ground. Oh, my ear. Even though that would be... Uh, yes, it's, it cannot be pushed because uh, someone is grappling it. Fell, probably. It's grappled, and it's prone. Yeah, you can't push it, but... There's currently a wolf holding it. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I still did my superpower punch, so I'm happy. I will say that... Let me make a con save for this Strider here. Yeah, I make it. So don't bother. And uh, that's uh, it for Hentai. Hentai, you're Hent up. Hentai? Alright, in case he's not at his computer, I guess I can pilot Hentai. Um, I'm back. Did I miss something? Uh, uh I can do this one, you can do the next one, because I'll be out in the store. Okay, go for it. So I yell out, You know what I love about spiders? They have so much protein in their legs. And after I'm done barbecuing your ass, I will rip you limb from limb and eat you as I cast fire. Okay. Uh, what level again? Uh, this time at level three. Okay, level three fireball. Where are you casting? Yeah, around here so I can take out most of the spot. Yeah, over there, I don't believe you will hit Flint. Yeah, if you shoot over there, you'll hit all the spiders, but not Flint. Yep, okay. Excellent. And should I also roll Intimidation? Um... I don't think sure. so. Sure. Go ahead and roll intimidation. Hentai. <clears throat> 18. Alright. Let me see what these spiders roll for their deck saves. Uh, fail. 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 All three spiders are dead. As for the big ass Puider Remins. <clears throat> One. Makes it. Makes it. Makes it all of three. All three of them make it. Theoretically, the one under the floor would not be hit by it, so it doesn't even matter. But anyway, it's 14 points of fire damage. 14 points of fire damage. Wait, does the doesn't the prone one have? Is there a disadvantage on deck saves when you're prone? I am. It's uh no, actually prone. No. Prone gives no nothing. Okay, I don't remember all the rules for prone. I just know that we do it and then kill things. <laughs> it's okay. Um. Da -ba -da -ba -da. You're welcome, by the way. Da -ba -da -ba -da. I proned it. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. For all the other time. So that's your turn, Hentai, I believe? And I cast Inspiration to Graf again. Uh, Graf still has Inspiration. In that case, I'll so give do, it to do it to, do, do it to me, I, I have a plan. Okay, Summer Lad gets inspired. Summer Lad, you have a 1d8. Show at your d20 rolls. I will kill the spider. <laughs> oh boy. So, end of Hentai's turn, now is Graf's time to shine. What are you doing, Graf? Graf hears it's take a spider lady to lunch day. He moves down 5, 10, 15, 20, and attacks the spider lady three times with advantage because she's prone. Yes, she's very prone. So go ahead and do your worst. A 21 hits. Roll for damage. 
Colossus like Slayer. It. Colossus Slayer. You also get sneak and all that fun stuff. Sneak attack, Hunter's Mark, and all that shit, and all that snass. Uh, no, because I don't have Hunter's Mark on her, so it's just uh, 11 points for the first. 11 for the first attack? Second yes. attack? 23 hits, roll for damage. 10 points. 10 piercing. Okay, um, offhand attack, I believe. Bonus attack. Silver sword, okay, that hits. So, tw eight. 25 hits, that's an 8. Mm, you are dual, dual wielding guy, so he does full damage. Okay, this spider is look, looking closer to dying. Still has some fight in it though. That's all of mine. And that's it for your turn, Graf, right? Yes, it is. Okay, Summer Ledge, you are up. What are you doing? Okay, I'm going to inflict the wounds, the spider that is in front of me. I mean, this, this one. Okay. Uh, level two inflict wounds uh, and using just, the blood. Just so you know, Summerlet, like that one is standing up and is okay. The other one is is prone and you would have advantage on that. Just letting you know. I know. I know, but I want to try and one shot this thing too. Okay, so I'm using the bloods, by the way. Uh, okay. Level two and using the blood. Okay, so go ahead and roll for an attack. It's one vial for two d8. Yes. Yes. You can only use it one at a time. No, I know. I'm just asking so that I can write it here. Yes. One vial for one D. Two D eight. So, Malad, go ahead and roll your inflict wounds. It hits. Uh, roll for damage at level two. Inflict wounds on the Spider Woman. Seven plus the damage from the conflict wounds is uh, 22, 29. All right, lots of damage. Did I kill it? No, damn it. It's looking very good. Well, I didn't use the inspiration, sadly. I thought I was going to low, low, roll low. Well, thankfully you didn't need it. Uh, hold on one second here. I'm holding on for a second. What's up? What? Yeah, that came from the whole UA thing. Oh, the one that I did not read. Okay. Uh, the creature can roll that die and add the number roll to one damage. Or So if or... you want to, Sam, you can roll that d8 that you have and add it to the damage, or you can hold on to it and add it to something else. Nah, I'm going to add it to the damage. Okay, so roll that d8 for your from, from your inspiration. Uh, the spider woman takes five more points of damage and you're no longer inspired, Summerled. Yeah. There you go. And that's it for your turn, Matthias. You're up. Unless you want to do some th some bonus action, Sam. I don't have anything to do as bonus action. Okay, Matthias. Yep. Uh, you can step on top of the door if you want. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Because I was going to jump over this way okay <clears throat> and you do so yep and as a bonus action I'm moving my hunter's mark on to hang on that was a uh... that was 30 feet <laughs> there so yeah bonus action on the prone uh, drider prone or okay, yeah. it's hunter's marked and prone and grappled <clears throat> and close to right. dying. Yeah, I'm going to take a swing at it. Okay, I have advantage. 
Not right. not because it's prone, but because we're flanking with Graf. Little do you know. So 26, 26 hits. Go ahead and roll for damage. You have Colossus layer on it. Yep. Uh that would be fourteen. Okay. Fourteen. And Hunter's Mark. Which is five, so that would be nineteen total. Okay. Got it. And time for another swing. Second attack. Time for that critical you always do. Come on, finish off with a critical. Uh whoops, I clicked the wrong button. I don't know why that did that. That was weird. There we go. 23 hits. Uh, 23. Roll and for damage. Dueling style. That'd be 14 again. Plus Hunter's Mark. All Six. Right. Which is 20. Uh... It is on the cusp of dying. It's holding on by a thread. Not because it's a wow. spider, but because it's a say. So, um, Tiger, I believe... No, you don't have a bonus action, so that's it for your turn. Yeah, I used my bonus action to move my Hunter's Mark. Alright. So... Okay. Next up, Flint, Lilith, and Matthias, the three of you just here now, la uh, very loud banging on the door beneath you on the floor. Apparently something is trying to get out, but can't. But it is trying. Uh, yeah, we can't understand it, but we know that it's screaming and probably cursing us out. Pretty much. Uh, next up is the spider woman that's beside Summerled. What she is going to go ahead and do is say fuck this shit and is gonna is gonna go ahead and cast darkness on this area. Okay, so this whole dark area here is filled with darkness. And then it goes ahead and steps away. Doing a running away pretty much and summer led you get an attack of opportunity mainly actually no you're a spellcaster warcast summer led you have an attack of opportunity with disadvantage because you are considered blinded okay i will attempt a inflict wounds level one sure uh you do so with disadvantage Eighteen, just misses. Damn it! You, you channel negative energy into your hands, and you try to touch the Spider Woman as she tries to flee, and your hands find nothing but but pitch black darkness. And this Drader, it runs away because it sees the way that the combat is going, and it does not want to be there. The next one. He ain't so lucky, unfortunately. So he's gonna go ahead and try to go off with a bang and attack someone one last time. Because there ain't much else to do. Uh... Graf, you're gonna take it. Alright. The Drider attacks you with disadvantage because it's blinded. A long sword against you, Graf. Nine misses. Again, against uh, Draken. That's a uh, eleven to hit, misses. And against Lilith, that's gonna be a bite attack. That's gonna be a nineteen to hit. Hello, Shabuke. Mother. <laughs> Sure. You keep forgetting that she has that. <laughs> I do. Lilith, you suffer eight, eight points of damage. 
19 points of burning damage. Uh, let me see if she saves uh, with her deck saves. So that's gonna be uh, actually a roll with disadvantage. Deck save! She makes it. So she takes half damage. So she takes 9 points of damage. She had 2 hit points. She dies. Yay, I finally killed somebody with Elish Rebuke. Yes, you sent him to hell. And Damn. Uh, as Finally. it happens, as it happens now, uh, combat is over. One of the spiders is trapped, and the other one has run away very far. Uh, Where did it come from? Never, How did it get in the room? That's very, a good question. In a very and short amount of time. I don't like spiders. Um, first and foremost, all of you are still hearing banging coming from the floor. I'd like to try and talk to the spider lady in the floor if I can. Um, I mean, anti Dracon fell, maybe. Yeah, it seems to only speak under common. All right, I'll wave over uh, Fell since he speaks under common. And then I'll be like, "What is it?" I want to talk to the spider lady here, but I don't understand the word she says. And hoping you can help me out. For the most part, she's swearing at you, but sure. All right, so. All right, so. Alright, so first, I want her to calm her ass down. I'm um, going to relay this. Okay. Uh, Fel, as you tell her to calm her tits and stop, she seems to abide and stops the banging and the cursing. And just holds there. That, that uh, pleading with you to let her go. I'm gonna tell her that the rest of her party, the rest of her little group of other spiders are all dead. <laughs> if she wants to remain alive, she will listen and she will stay without a fuss. Okay. I will do I, I will do whatever you want. Just just don't kill me. And that's essentially what I was going to tell her anyway. I'm just waiting on Fel's word, I guess. I'm going to tell Flint. She's uh, in a very cooperative mood. I'm, gonna I'm still going to wave at everyone to take aim at the hole just in case she turns out to be a traitorous bitch. I'm keeping a short bow shot prepped. Yeah, I'm telling you. Okay, all of you are aiming at the hole, pretty much. And yeah, I'm going uh, to do that, and then I will. Really, yeah, and then I will open up the door and let her out. Okay. Uh, Graf, as you open up the door, she has a face of disdain. Very, very, very sour face of disdain. As she looks at all of you, as you open up the trap door, Ambari pretty much allows her to, to leave. Uh, she does not look happy at all to be inside that pit and with you having pulled whatever shenanigans you just did. But she seems to be complying. She doesn't seem to be striking back or doing any hostile move. And don't attack the Sensodyne either. Okay, I won't attack anyone. Just let me go, and you will never see me again. I certainly hope not. Get the fuck out. She climbs out of the hole, takes a few steps towards the north door, uh, taking a few looks back at all of you, uh, just to make sure that she's not being followed or anyone's aiming at her and intending to shoot before she... Reaches for freedom to the, towards the door, and finally she just looks away. 
uh, towards the 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 exit and scutters away and vanishes so into the, the other darkness. one get out come again how are they getting out where'd the other one go um all the ones of you who have the best sort of hearing would could tell that the other one that escaped uh, with the area of darkness went towards the north and up the stairs back into the big ass dungeon but the fuck are they getting in there holes did anyone aside from Lilith take damage yeah I'm down to 73 out of 89 it's not really a whole lot but yeah it hurt a little bit okay then I'm going to flint and heal him all right and some of that you do heal, uh, you go by and heal Flint uh, as much as he needs. And as Fel says that, all of you think for a while and you do remember seeing holes here and there in the dungeon, but none of them seemed big enough for a person to be able to go through. You do imagine, though, that it is very possible that someone could scudder. Uh, through there if they were malleable enough, such as a spider or hentai. How many it was how long would it take to seal them? A Just, while. Uh it would indeed take a little bit of a while to seal all of the holes that you have found. Uh most of them are the cave ins that have happened in in the dungeons. Uh yeah, it would take some days to seal them all up. Hmm. Okay. I don't think we have that time. However, seeing as you cleared out this dungeon and have been here much later, and in all that time no new creatures have came in, you imagine that it does take some time for them to come in and out through that hole. You don't imagine that they are going back and forth every day, every hour. Regardless, all the same for them is they come out of their hiding spot, poking their heads out and says, Is everything okay? Yeah, I just had some spider ladies try to do some weird shit. Keep your eyes open for that. Okay, we will. Um... Shall we go now? Towards the surface? Yeah, probably. Unless somebody wants to spend some time trying to rip out body parts from the spiders. I think we should move. Time is pressing for these sensitive. Yeah, and there wasn't any really special equipment on these spider lady things no all right let's keep going okay all of you put the thoughts aside and move towards the exit uh, as you go back into the upper floor uh, and into the upper floor of the dungeon I imagine that you'll backtrack your way directly towards the exit from the treasure room yep and yep. within minutes you are outside of the dungeon and back into the red woods coming out of the cavern that you went through and uh, find your cart there completely unmolested it's there just as you left it um Bell is going to just flop down on the grass by the what's way what's doing after all of this what's up what's where are we going now I'm probably going to head back to Dorf, trade Sensodyne uh, at our manor, and then head up to Mall Marsh and Peak Farts. Oh, I see. That is that a good plan. Nice. That was my plan. But how's uh, Fel's tiny wyvern doing? Uh, that's what I was going to ask. Did you leave her in the cart? No, I did not. Well, then she was with you the whole time. Yes, she was. In your, uh, in your, in your pouch. 
In your shirt shirt pouch? Yes, in my, my tailored pouch. Uh, but she does seem relieved to be out of the cramped space that were the caverns and the dungeons as you all come out into the three in the afternoon sun. Uh, do we have any food for him? <laughs> Matthias? Um, we might have some. If not, maybe we can hunt a little bit around here. These grounds aren't so bad for that. I saw that the last time you went hunting, we had, we had quite a haul. Should oh, still have is... some left over from that. I would imagine that you do. Uh, so, so we what... need to make room in the cart to carry all this after that. And anyway, some of us are going to have to be walking. Yep. They need to be under the cover of the cart more than we do. Mm, That's true. I'll walk, I'll walk then. I don't mind walking. I can walk. It's not, it's not a problem. problem. And I don't mind walking either. Okay. I think we'll basically All right. just walk. Because we do have like six Sunfidine with us, or five Sunfidine. We have quite a few. Yes, we have five. So all of you gladly take it to walking and leave the Sunfidine behind as you start making your way back towards Dorf. Uh, Summerled, you do know the cantrip make water, right? Great. What? You do know the spell create water, right? Yes, I do. Why? No, just to make sure, because I was wondering, it has been more than a day that since hentai has last been in water, so directly he would be drying up. Yeah, if he has the create water thing, all we really need is some sort of large enough container we can squeeze hentai into and put him in with some water. Yeah, just to know. You have the barrels. The barrels. Yeah, just to make sure, but, but regardless, you're going back through the Wishing Pond uh, where you met Lucian, so it, it'll be okay. So, how, you're... How are the other Sanfidine disguising themselves? That is true. As they all come out, uh, Stubhard kind of drills the other, the other tree a little bit on the whole what shape do we take out here in this world to disguise ourselves that so people don't know uh, don't get freaked out by us and as they look around they have very little to draw inspiration from and they seem to look at look at you being squad for inspiration oh <laughs> do it go for it do it so uh, shortly thereafter you see them uh, casting spells on themselves and becoming uh, not quite like you, but a shortier, skinnier version of you, Matthias, with different stripes here and there. Yeah. Uh, you also see a, a kind of lighter fur version of Fel as well. The lighter colors. And weirdly enough, it it I I wouldn't know to say that it feels right or wrong, but one of them also tries to pass for a no. Oh Which one is which uh uh dog so I can log it down? <laughs> okay. I thought you would never ask. So, um, meaning you was hoping you wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh -huh. Kate, uh, Kate, she's uh, turning into a fell lookalike. Andres is looking as a Matthias lookalike, and Francis is looking like a gnoll. Possibly uh, skinnier than you, even. And all of them have disguises now. And as, uh, as the other two, uh, Stubhard and uh, Terleg, the two of them go back to their to their shapes of the Tabaxi and the Elf, and uh, make their well, they make their way to the cart, cover themselves as best as they can from the sun, 
And Bing Squad, where are you going next? Back to Dorf, right? Yeah, I think we're gonna go. We're probably gonna go straight to the manor because it's gonna be late when we get to Dorf. Because there are yeah. no roads, basically. Okay. So it's gonna be a longish trip to Dorf, I imagine. Uh, it's take you. It'll take you six hours to. From from the place in the red woods where you currently are back to Dorf itself. Actually, no, never mind. You guys would have been a little bit savvier with your traveling, so you would have. Actually, no. Right, we both. I uh, think me and Matthias both have wanderer. Uh, yeah, we're both outlanders, so we could. Yeah, it would take yeah. four hours to get out of the woods and then back into the roads. Uh, that's so you can travel a little bit faster. So yeah, it six hours total. You're back in Dorf. Uh, I would say that also during your trip, since you're walking and trying to go slow enough that the cart doesn't break under the rocks and uneven uneven terrain that you're traveling and trekking through, uh, Matthias, Summerled, and whoever else is also going out for hunting to procure more food for Sapphira, who is growing to a plump little wyvern. And she's gonna get big at some point. So, um, I'm gonna see if I can, you know, while we're on the road, train Sephira to, you know, do some tricks. Ooh, tricks? What sort of tricks? Well, maybe to practice on her flying. Um, alright. Fel, go ahead and give me... Would you want me to help you with that? If you'd like. It's because I am the flying creature. Alright. So, with Summerlet's help... <clears throat> uh, let's make this a two-part test. Summerlet, I would like you to go ahead and make an animal handling check. Uh, that would have been a normal check. Sorry, I forgot to turn off a disadvantage. It's okay. Twenty-one. All right. Uh, you feel confident enough in the way that you relay this information to the to the screeches that passes for language for young Sapphire and you imagine that you can help her uh, get a little bit of grasp on the whole flying so long as she and Fel uh, as she feels that Fels trusts you enough to allow you to get close to her and whatnot so Fel I would like you to make an animal handling check with advantage this time around <clears throat> <clears throat> As for everyone else, I don't think you will be able to do much else uh, because some of you are hunting and because none of you are sitting in the cart and riding, so it's hard to focus on another task when you're walking, such as riding on the books and carving and such other. Right. If anything, Summerlet is the one that Mel actually trusts the most. Yeah. So, Fel, you relate to Sapphira that you trust Summerled enough to allow him to approach her and teach her the ins and outs of flying. And as it goes, Sapphira doesn't seem to be that quite that close yet to flying, but she seems ever more confident in standing and perching around you like uh, standing on a, as little support as possible she seems almost ready to really take off and start flying but she's still hanging on to you as you look and examine her it seems like her wings are not strong enough to hold all of her weight 
uh, if she were to try and fly up. She's a fast learner. She sings oh, okay. eager. After that happens, I, I kind of want to put her on, you know, hold her, hold her by her body off my head and just have her stick her wings out to kind of get the sensation. <laughs> it certainly helps. She flaps around, trying to, to look, uh, trying to look her head and around as she keeps flapping her wings, trying to fly. Uh, but no, no matter how much she flaps her wings, you never feel the lift that she's trying to, to leave your hand. You'll always feel the same weight there. Uh, and you, you get the idea that she's not going to be flying that, that soon, but she seems eager to, 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 to learn. <clears throat> should go and do it. So, as all of you spend some time hunting and uh, gathering around Safara and the group, uh, in three hours the sun sets and the, your Symphony and friend seems much more happier to be out of the tarp and look around and actually get to enjoy the, the scenery that they didn't get, did not get to see much of. And the 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 three symphonies that came from this the redwood settlement they look much more uh, astounded by the surroundings and what the surface looks like. Yes, as you gather, these generation of symphonies have not never been to the surface, and would and probably would never if you hadn't come along and clear clean up that dungeon. So. Uh, some six hours later, all of you are back in Dorf, <coughs> the city that you all love and enjoy so very much. And what, it's like nine o'clock at night or later? Yes, it's Love precisely you. night in the afternoon, in the evening, even. So were we going to stop here or are we just going to pass right on through and go home? Pretty much we're everything's gonna closed, so... I think we should head <laughs> there so that we can get these guys to... The other Symphodyne group. Same. same. I agree. Yep. Um, as you are walking through Dorf with your cart and kind of slowing down a little bit to enjoy uh, the slower pace that that comes with you being inside the city and the cart bobbing up and down on the cobblestones of the roads, <clears throat> the you see now two shapes approaching you, the group. In the dark, okay. zone. it's a little what bit. kind of shapes? Uh, humanoid shapes. In the dark, it's a little bit hard to make out who they are until they are so close, but so close that you. Uh, that you really... know, some of us have a uh, dark vision, so we'd be able to kind of pick it out a little yeah. bit. Yes. Uh, they get so close now, some 30 something feet away, that you, Lilith. Uh, immediately picks up who these two uh, beings are as the rest of the beings quite slowly comes to realization as well as they come close to you especially those who can see in the dark who can see a little bit further away uh, you do see a humanoid a human and a halfling approaching you and they look to you with kind of hopeful eyes like oh being squad it's been a while hasn't it Hope oh, you, it's uh. Hope you have been doing well. Loza and, and Ani. Is it Loza Mansus? No. Atlas? As no. it happens, uh, these human and this halfling are different. They are uh, Lilith. You recognize them instantly. It's Aaron and Leoni. So, how have you been? It's been so long. Poor Aaron and Leoni. <laughs> Um, I, some, I hope that we're not. I should have been remembering. I'm, Doug, I'm seriously lost here. <laughs> it might have been a while since we've seen them. Uh, like... Leone is the guy who was hunting for the daughters. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember. Yeah. That guy who tried to kill me. Oh, and the, and, uh, and the druid. And Aaron oh, is. Druid. And Aaron is the. Aaron is the pirate 
who you guys allowed to leave the cave alive? Oh, her! No, the one that, um... We... That I let go. That I didn't tell anybody I let go. Yes. Because he was bleeding, uh, by the cave, and then you'll... And then you healed him, but he was too weak to go inside the dungeon with you. And then eventually you came out to see if he hadn't stole the card, and he hadn't. So you let him go. Pretty much. Yes, with a torch and a ration, and then I never told Hantai that the person he wanted to kill I let go. This is gonna be fun. Uh, hi, how are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, see, the thing is, Z is not here at the moment, Thank so... God. So Hantai is bubbling in his, uh, in his barrel of water, pretty much. Yeah, he'll, he's either sleeping in the barrel of water, or he's just bubbling in rage. So, um, I hope it's not a bad time right now for you. Being well, it depends on how much time you need. We are currently traveling back to our place. Well, it shall not be too long, really. We, we just want to talk for a little bit, gather a little information. It shouldn't take too long. Because you see, uh, me and me and Aaron here. Uh, well, we are in this whole wild world, and there's not a whole lot going on here, except you know the dangers of Nolan. And well, I came here to avenge my family, but after, well, what you what what you told me really resonated with him, and I I, I said, you know what? There is more to life. And I didn't have a whole lot of skills really, so I decided to apply my skills to finding people and I became sort of a bounty hunter. I work now finding missing people for a living and so does Aaron here. And the, the ex-pirate just nods and says, yeah, we, are, we don't have a whole lot to go on, but we have enough of a talent to finding people that we are trying to make a living out of that and what do you know there, with, are, there are a lot I'm of people paying Drake. I'm with Dracon on the insight check uh, same yeah. here because I'm still kind of afraid he's gonna try to kill me <laughs> sure insight check all of you who wishes to insight check this this poor 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 boy <clears throat> damn I will that advantage you don't have advantage. Don't have advantage. Waste of a natural 20. I know. <laughs> don't worry, I rolled a 5. I rolled a 5. <laughs> right to a natural 1. <clears throat> oh, no. The spectrum strikes again. It's the punishment for wasting a natural 20. Maybe. So... Uh, Graf, you, however, try to hide behind the cart, which is not hard. It's night time, none of them have dark vision. So easily enough you slink around the card and make yourself not seen and completely not visible. Despite having uh despite having been the one who healed Aaron, you decide to hide away from him. So um Flint, Summerled, the two of you are absolutely certain that Leone and Aaron are being completely honest. They're not lying or hiding anything. Hmm. Little if you get some sense that they are being truthful, you still feel guarded in a way. But you see no... Instinct. Yeah. M more instinctually you feel like this guy has crossed me before. I feel like I should stay alert here. Draken, you have no idea whatsoever. You're like, whoa, whoa, who are these guys again? I'm hiding in the cart. That you. That works. So, <clears throat> and we have been using our talents to finding missing people, and, uh, oh, it has been working out. But, you see, uh, part of our job, we didn't really begin finding missing people just for the money, we also wanted to find missing people of our own. Well, I 
Leonie says, I don't have anyone to search for really, so eventually I'll find the daughters, the real ones, mind you, sorry, and then I'll see what I do when that day comes, but right now, right now I'm just looking for my next job. I, however, am on a different predicament, Aaron starts saying. You do remember a few nights ago you rescued me outside the cavern south of here. I was with a friend and he vanished. I looked around asked everyone uh, in Gamberg and Dorf. I even tried the runaways from Dusen Gengen but nobody has seen him. And You remember there were monsters in that cave, right? Yeah, I thought we told him that. Yes, there are monsters. Yeah, your friend wasn't so lucky with those monsters. Oh, so... It's not really alive then anymore, right? Yeah, that's unfortunate, but that's what happened. Well... Oh, that one, one misresolved then. That guy owed me money, but... Oh... Sucks to be me, I guess. How much was it? Wasn't much. Some 20 gold pieces. But <laughs> was enough for was like a few days worth of a meal and some nice drinking back then. Flint will mm. hand 20 gold. Just like that. I was, I gonna, was gonna... Well, I was gonna do it, so... Oh, that's... <laughs> Mighty generous of you! Holy shit, I did not... Th thank you! Yeah, this, this place sucks with monsters. We know how it is to lose some friends to monsters, so... Yeah, you know, we, we hope anything will help. We also did kind of pull them down there, so it's kind of our fault. <laughs> oh, they did kill him, actually, but... That's not here. Lilith her. did not, nor will she tell that. Uh, and Flint uh, made a point to specifically say that we did not kill him, the monsters did. Lilith will leave it at it's our fault. <laughs> well, that we couldn't keep him safe. I mean, I mean we, we couldn't keep him safe. <clears throat> From hentai. Anyway, uh, Leonie says then, well, that's good and all, but since you're feeling in such a generous mood, there's another matter I am trying to look for. It's the matter of a missing person, and I have got reports that I have been told by the people of Hokengen that you might know a little bit better about what you look for. You see, there's... I'm the bounty hunter of the group here. What's up? So, you see, there's this arcanist woman in Maul's Marsh, and she has gone missing. And Fuck. And the people who the people from King and the Mouse Marsh they have said that they have seen this weird, uh, big ass insect insect like creatures. Uh, Double uh, fuck! God damn it! Uh, involving her vanishing, and the people of King said that they saw you carting one of those creatures a few uh, a week ago or so. So we're, I imagine we're familiar with them. So I imagine that you might have some information on the matter. Uh, from uh, vague notions, I guess. Alright, since you are a novice bounty hunter at this point, from bounty hunter to bounty hunter, let me tell you this. You see those shits, you run in the other direction. Wow. Okay, I was actually expecting to find her. There's somewhat of a bounty on her head. Uh, find we'll her. find her. her. We'll find her. Because we left some shit with her, and now she went missing. We are responsible for that too, apparently. Most likely. We left some things with her that those insect things would most likely want back. Gave me this bag. Uh, well... Yes, she gave you the bag. Well, some of the Hokkien people, they say that they have seen those creatures around in the valley between Mount's Valley but 
we they also told you that you guys had knew a little bit more about them so we decided to come here first and seek you out and ask about some information on the matter before facing the unknown but well if what you say is true then i guess they're incredibly deadly and incredibly lethal. They're fast, they're hard to hit, they're strong. You see them, you run. Well, all right. They're ugly, they're scary, and I want to kill them. Oh, I see you have some beef with them already then. Personal. Well, okay. I, I guess we won't get in your way then. Um, if, well, if she is tied with these creatures, as you say, she might be, I guess, I'll leave this bounty to you then. If we can bring her back, if you're still in Dorf, I'll give you the reward money. Well, aren't you the generous people nowadays? I mean... Well, Lilith has a fuck ton of money in her pockets. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't complain, but sure, if you say so. I'm basically stealing this person's their job from them. Like, I just took a paycheck away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, like I said, they said that the these creatures have been sighted in the va in the Tree Mountain Valleys. Um, Is that the one that the road going to Nade goes through? Yes. Great. If you we have how are we supposed to get there while we have Senf? We leave the Senfordine at our place. We go take care of this. I communicate that I have ours is in trouble, and they need help immediately. You communicated what? <clears throat> that ally of ours is in trouble, and they need help. Oh, okay. He's telling it to the Senfordine, so they know what's up. Well, I believe we can stay a while in the in the in the bay in the shore uh, Senfordine settlement for for a day or two. Then, I mean, we have a lot of a lot of Senfordine uh, gossip to catch up on, so I don't see when why that would be a bad thing. Thank God. And Leon, your friend says, but um, if they really are as dangerous as they say, I would advise you caution. But uh, since you're the seasoned ones, I guess you already know that. We were ambushed twice by them. It wasn't fun times. No. Oh. Oh. Once again, uh, if you need us for anything, we you can probably find us in Hokengen. That's where people seem to be vanishing the most. But that's where we're gonna go. And then Shangen, because it seems like people are vanishing left and right in Shangen. So, yeah. Probably the cult. Uh, thank you again, Bean Squad, for. Well, for being you. And once again, thank you, Lilith. I guess that in more ways than one, I owe you my life. Just, just don't go dying. <laughs> I do not intend to. But regardless, you all take care. And they all, uh, the two of them, Leonie and Aaron, they say their goodbyes and start making their way uh, towards Gimberg. <coughs> to the other road, the one you just came from. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. How about that? Oh boy. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I really don't like where this is going. So you know, go check in at the smithy to make sure there's good progress on that gun. Maybe it's finished. He really wants to use a new gun. And that the really for some lad. <laughs> you know, I feel like I should have seen this coming. I, I, I thought about it so as soon as I heard her name, I thought, wait, same. we so left was, the guns. It was and the same thing, she... like, like, she's taken, and we think you guys know something about it. I'm like, oh, fuck, the cream came for the guns. 
I mean, if you go around leaving alien technology left and right, someone's gonna go back and reclaim it. Yep, alright. Grab the stuff indoors. Indoors. Malmarsh, Hokengen, Cream Base. God, we're gonna be Except running for a week again. We have to leave. We'll leave the Sunfordine in the manor with their settlement. We'll let them all go. By the way, uh, all three objectives pretty much are in the same direction. So, theoretically, you can take the Sunfordine with you. They are, but like then the Sunfordine might die in the Kreen fight, or the Kreen might attack a Sunfordine settlement. In theory, we can leave the Sunfordine in either Malmarsh or Hokengen, wherever we happen to be at the time. We'll probably leave them in Malmarsh if they want to come with us. And we have to very specifically say, do not come or you will die. Who knows, they might be actually helpful. I don't know how, but they could. We have, we have three, three warrior Senfordine and three magic Senfordine kind of support casters. So long as they have more than 24 HP, I'm happy. Why 24? Oh, don't worry, I will always keep you above that. No, I'm talking about them, because one of the guys from the last fight, they took 23 out of 24 hit points of damage. Yeah, he was left with one hit point, the same for that guy. Oh, okay, I, I will look into that to see how I can heal up and keep them safe. Actually, he took that from a single fireball, so... Yeah, it was kind of nuts. <laughs> but it all worked out in the end. This time. And yeah, this time, so lucky you. So... Alright, I guess we'll talk about it on Discord, what our plan is, and how we're going to do everything. Yeah, right? Uh, we've got, this is we've gonna got be clocks ticking everywhere we go. And yeah, I finally got to introduce my new quest to you guys. Finding out what happened to Alistair. Also, Doug's just like, hey, guess what, guys? I'm giving you something? No. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. And it's cream. Ah. I mean... Hey, we had to deal with them again eventually. You had. Exactly, it's been too far along. And they they just had to come. It, it was unavoidable. They had to come. But on the bright side, all of you get uh, uh, 1,500 uh, experience points. Do Fel and Lilith get anything extra for their sparring match? Uh, well, they get a good sense of bonding. Works for me. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. That's good. It's good. <laughs> I mean... You just know I had to ask. Yeah. That's how only one time he got like 50 more experience than the rest of you guys, because he went and had an alley fight all by himself against a random guy. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, um, every one of you gets... Uh, uh, 1,500 experience points for defeating the spider people <laughs> and uh, and talking to Aaron and Leone and possibly embarking on a new quest and completing part of your current quest which is making sure that the same for and are connected and yeah. that is it for today everyone <laughs> uh, really? want to know the Sunfordine stuff. I'm excited for that. Me too, me too. We shall. Once you connect more Sunfordine uh, communities and go through the Sunfordine version of the War of the Almighty book. I wonder... Um, I wonder comments. Although I can't read it. The one person with history proficiency. <laughs> oh no. Um... I wish I wish we can find that Washia Saint Fadine. Well that's where we're heading to. Yeah, but she might not be there, so Who knows? Uh regardless anyway. Let's uh keep discussing shenanigans on Discord and I will see you next time. Have an amazing weekend everyone. And goodbye. See you guys on the Yep. Bye bye. You all have been so uh, quiet today. I wonder why. I like this session. It was nice. It was a good session. Yep. What's that for?
testing. Maybe next time I could just do that instead of being complicated. That works true. What's that roll for? 4D10. Um, that was my hand cannon critical roll plus the one point of violent shot I'd put into it plus the uh, uh, plus 10 for sharpshoot. Ah, uh, okay. Lots of damage. Especially with that roll. But anyway, be seeing you guys next time. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Ugh, that gives us so much to do. And to all of you on Discord, thank you. I mean, Twitch, thank you so very much for sitting through and watching a long ass session of DD. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to go to the YouTubes to follow up on previous sessions. That's so you can see everything that has happened in this group's adventure thus far. And then. And then, uh, come back here next week to check out the whole um, next session game. See where this group is going towards and what will happen. And with that, I will say bye-bye to you all. Have a good, good weekend, everyone.